Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. This telecast is copyrighted by the NCAA for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any picture, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NCAA's consent is prohibited. Complete to McAvoy on the outside. He gets out to midfield. And then that's Cap once again. And Cap, you know, a bigger frame guy. A lot of times you'll see the smaller, speedier wide receivers get those quick outs. But if you're able to get it into the hands of a wide receiver that's 6'3", 200 pounds, that's a guy that can break a tackle and pick up some run after the catch. And that's the type of first down play that you need that's going to give you a chunk. It's kind of an extension of the run game. It's a short, high percentage pass. Get your quarterback some confidence early on. Second down at six with Davis in the backfield to the left of Nickel. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near. And they'll run Jordan Davis here off the right side. And he is stuffed by Chris Lane. There was no faking that, man. He read that key immediately, came up, filled in the hole. And that's something that he's been able to do all season long coming into today's contest. 88 tackles on the season, 55 of those solo. Let's go ahead and make it 56. He smacked him on that play. Lane, one of the many players for the Rams named to the all-region teams. Six Shepard Rams were named to the first and second team, but he... Lane, one of those on the second team. Bajant was the only first teamer in Region 1. Nickel adjusting at the line here on third down at 6 from the 49. Opening drive of this quarterfinal matchup. Nickel takes the snap looking to throw. Has some pressure from the blind side. Now rolls out to the right. Fires complete to Jordan Davis on the near side for a first down. And Nickel takes a big shot from Chris Lane on that time, but Nickel did a good job of attacking that line of scrimmage, making the defense come up, take away that run option, but he's able to hit the running back on the sideline. That's the second time that he's been able to roll out to his right, make the defense commit to the line of scrimmage, and he's able to get the ball right over the outstretched hands of the defender. So into Rams territory goes Kutztown here. First and 10 now from the 37-yard line. They'll bring Davis out to the wide receiver spot. Back to the left of Nickel is Jer Jeremiah Nelson, but Nickel will keep here running to the outside and then slides down Number after a short pickup. And Nickel's not moving well after taking that hit from Chris Lane on the previous play. He's a, he's a, he's a bigger quarterback. He, he's a load, 6'4", 250 pounds, but... That's 6'4", 250 pounds, quarterback size. <laughs> That's not linebacker size. Chris Lane, he might not be as big, but he, he, he punches above his weight, so most certainly. Batting in on the tackle for Shepard, one of those guys that's had to step up at the cornerback position for the Rams. So it'll be second down and five from the 32. High snap, nickel keeps. Runs forward for about four. Nickel again on the carry, brought down by number 10, Chris Lane. It was a savvy veteran play that time by Nickel, not able to get the handoff. That's one of the things. You have to get that snap in a good position. If you have a lot of those refakes in front, timing is important. That time the snap was a little bit high throughout the timing, but the veteran quarterback able to make something happen. Nickel keeps here on third and one, and with that extra push, I believe he had the first down. Kendall Duckworth trying to leap up over the line and make the stop, but was unable to. Bridgman, the big fella, down at the bottom of that pile. So, nice opening drive for the Golden Bears after it looked like Shepard had a chance to get a stop. Pitch down driving now down to the 28-yard line. First down and 10 now with about 11 and 20 to go in this first quarter. So far, a lot of motion and shifts. And if you think back to that first game that they played early on in the season, that was something that Cutstown broke out in the second half where they used a lot of motion, a lot of shifts, not allowing that defense to really dig in and key on what's going on. So we'll have a timeout here, and we'll set aside for a quick 30-second break. No score here, opening quarter, 11.09 to go in this first quarter. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We welcome you back to Andre Reed Stadium. 11.09 to go in this first quarter. No, dr no score. Opening drive for Kutztown. 
They've worked the ball to the 27-yard line. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. Matt Miller on, along with Donald Kenny and Kyle McLaughlin on camera. Daryl Miller, our on-site producer, and Spencer Dupuy back in the studio. Jordan Davis getting the carry, and he gets met by Lane again in the hole. After a short pickup. Number one, Jordan Davis carries for Kutztown. Tackle by number 55, Jack Baxter. Okay, Jack Baxter in there. Also on the tackle. Baxter, just a freshman, a guy that's been part of that defensive line rotation and has made some solid plays for the Rams this season. Second down and nine after the one-yard pickup. And that's something that the Rams defensive unit has been has done well throughout the season is rotate those guys up front, keeping them fresh. We've talked about how they're undersized up front, and that's going to be important that you keep rotating them and keeping them fresh. High snap again. Davis stutter steps, cuts it to the outside. Gets down inside the 19, or about, down to about the 19-yard line. It's run by Jordan Davis. It's a big play by the Golden Bears. They were backed up after that. First down play, it was going to be second and long, and that's usually in the favor of the defense as, as to their advantage because it kind of handcuffs the offensive play caller because you have to get yards because you most certainly don't want to face a third and long. But that time, Dave was able to make something happen after he was get stacked up in the backfield. Now it's third and short. Especially against a team like Kutztown, not really known for some explosive plays on offense. Third down and one. Davis the bank to the left. He'll get the carry. That time he stutter stepped, and it probably wasn't the best decision because he had a hole up the middle. But setting the edge was Corey Shell for the Rams. Flag comes in, stopping Davis short of the line, but we'll see what this penalty flag is. There is no foul for holding on the play. The block was ruled to be legal. Fourth down. The official was singly fourth down. So, that backside defensive end, very disciplined on that play, not crashing down. They're running that read zone action. Davis coming across the quarterback's face. If the quarterback pulls that, he might be able to get to the edge, but that is one thing that this Shepard Rams defense has is a ton of speed and athletes on the edge. So disciplined defensive end, not crashing down, playing discipline, making that quarterback give the ball up, and they're able to stack him up and force him to an early fourth down challenge. Fourth and one for the Golden Bears. Man going in motion. Davis, or Nickel takes the snap. He's got a wide open lane for that first down. Duckworth made the tackle. And I think they might roll a horse collar here as well to add on to the end of that run. Again, Golden Bears using a lot of motion and shifts. And that time, the big offensive lineman, Luke Lozowicki, was pulling around the outside, got the block in space. <laughs> That's a late holding. <laughs> yeah. It came in right at the tackle, and you just <laughs> pointed out Loza Wiki with some nice block, but the official saw a hold, so that will move that one back, and now an interesting decision for Kutztown on what they'll do here on fourth and six. They've also ran a lot of time off this clock, or it should be fourth and 11, excuse me. That's usually the saying with offensive linemen is that you never want to hear their name during the game because it's usually not a good thing. But he was out there blocking in space, which is a difficult task for offensive linemen. And that time, hands getting outside the framework and, more importantly, out there in open space where the referee can see it and rest when hidden. Dinged so. him up for a holding penalty on the play. So the Golden Bears will still go for it here on fourth down and 11. Nickel throws over the middle, incomplete. Shepard gets the stop after the penalty. A big shot by Baxter that time. The 6'2", 265-pound freshman able to get into the backfield. And like we said, Nickel's coming off of a week where he was sacked five times. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out over the course of the game is how that Rams defense is going to be able to get into the backfield and get some shots on the quarterback. Because even if it doesn't go down as a sack, he's certainly going to feel it throughout the course of the game. One positive for Kutztown, they did take a lot of time off that clock, just 8.52 remaining here in this first quarter, and Shepard with its first possession. Bajan takes the snap play action, dumps it down underneath on the far side, complete. Bajan's pass is complete to number 47, Michael McCook. Michael McCook. Of all the weapons on Shepard, they go to McCook to begin this ballgame, the fullback. 
McCook, that's his eighth catch of, seven of the, the play, season. Second and three for Shepard, but he is a weapon 34. down towards the goal line. Has three touchdowns on the book so far this year. So a lot of times he can slip out of the backfield undetected. Bajan in the shotgun formation. Ty Hebron the back to the left of Tyson here on second down. Bajan will hand it to Hebron. He finds a crease. Up the middle, but then cuts down, comes up and makes that tackle. Good cut that time by Hebron, setting up his blocker. Wetzel, not the biggest tight end, more of an H-back the way that Rams offense likes to use him. And he was able to get a good block. Hebron setting up that block and picking up the first down for the Rams offense. First down and 10 now for Shepard from their own 38-yard line. Bajan again going Hebron, running right side. Gets it down 22, to about the 36-yard line, but gain of about three. Number 45, Kyle Sapp makes the stop. Sapp in on the tackle, the 5'11", 220-pound senior from West Hampton, New Jersey. It's going to be in the 42-yard line. Second down and about six after the four-yard pickup. Seven and a half minutes to go in this opening quarter. Bajan adjusting at the line of scrimmage. Takes the snap, will look to throw. Has time, all day to throw, and throws complete on the far sideline to Josh Gonterrick for a Rams first down. Great pass protection up front by that Rams offensive line, giving the quarterback the extra time that he needed. That was good coverage on the back end by the Golden Bears, and Gonterrick able to work free late in the play to pick up the first down. Justin Harris, the man in coverage, Enforcing Gonteric out of bounds. So first and ten for the Rams from the from the midfield stripe. And Harris was a guy that the Rams certainly targeted in that first matchup. So it looks like they're trying to go back to the well here early on. Well, they're also probably trying to avoid Lloyd. He had a big <laughs> game against Goodstown. They'll take a shot on Lloyd here. E.J. Morgan can't quite dive out and make this catch. Morgan, not a guy that we talk about a whole lot, but he's made a few plays here and there. And, and Shepard maybe trying to catch. Cuts down off guard by going to him there, but pass just a little bit out, out of the outstretched arms of Morgan. It'll be second down and 10 from midfield. We talked about Lloyd. Lloyd bit on the double move. A good out and up that time by E.J. Morgan, but Lloyd just enough of a bump to knock the wide receiver off of his path. But that was something we didn't see in that first matchup. Shepard did not challenge the Golden Bears downfield, and that was kind of something that was unusual that time. Able to get it behind the corner and in front of the safety. This manual wasn't able to come down with the catch. Second and ten now for Shepard. And it's a little bit of a different look defensively as well as it looks like the Rams are going to take a timeout. So we'll take another 30-second break. Second and ten for Shepard when we come back. Here's this is Shepard University Ranch football on TV Five 10 and WRNR TV on Shepherd. YouTube. I think Shepherd University because I'm not just a number. One of the things that surprised me is how friendly everyone is. I like being able to walk down the street and have the professors recognize me by my name. I'm constantly learning. But it also has taught me so much about myself and about what I want to do with my future. The location at Shepherd is amazing. Cities like Washington, D.C., Baltimore are only about an hour, hour and a half away. You just got to see it. Once you see it, it just takes your heart. to Kutztown University, Andre Reed Stadium here. No score between Shepard and Kutztown. Rams driving out to midfield here. Have a second down and 10 with seven minutes to go in this opening quarter. Nick Verzelini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. Matt Miller, Donald Kenny, Colin McLaughlin on cameras. And then Daryl Miller, our on-site producer, Spencer Dupuy, back in the studio in Martinsburg. As... Agent in the offense, back on the field, out of the timeout. Hebron goes in motion. Agent looks for him initially, now dumps it over the middle of Brian Walker, and Walker emerging there at the reception, Brian down Walker. to about the 44-yard line, 43-yard line. Justice in on the tackle. That's just so many weapons that this Rams offense has at its disposal. You're so worried about the speed and athleticism on the outside with the wide receivers, as you should be, but you also have a chance of running the risk of letting those tight ends get involved in the game in Walker and Wetzel. That time Walker was on the drag route, right around linebacker depth, able to come up with a big catch and setting him up for a third and short. 
Third down and three. Bajan takes the high snap. Big hole for Ronnie Brown, and that is dangerous. Ronnie Brown is going to take that one into the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard. 43 yards. His first touch of the ball game, and he takes it to the house. Get the man the ball. <laughs> There's nothing else that's out there. He's averaging nine and a half yards per carry. I don't know what more he needs to do to get more touches during the course of the game, but things happen. Positive things happen when he touches the ball. Good blocks up front. Left tackle Eric Ostro able to turn out the defender, leaving a big gap for Ronnie Brown, and he was able to take it and, and do the rest. Aiden August scriven on to attempt the extra point. Six nothing. Shepard with 6.14 to go in this opening quarter. The point after is up and good, so it's 7 nothing. Rams, 6.14 to go in this first quarter. We'll take another 30 second break. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV 10, WRNR TV on YouTube. Dear college sports, there's light at the end of the tunnel, a return to normal, and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for the college sports. sports. To Andre Reed Stadium on the campus of Kutztown University. Shepard taking the early 7-0 lead and Hearing uh, behind me from Matt Miller that Martinsburg now holding a 7-0 lead over Huntington in the state championship game. So we'll try to keep you updated on that throughout this one. Hayden August Scriven on to kick it away for the Rams. Ronnie Brown with the 43-yard touchdown run to give Shepard this early 7-0 lead. Cuts down with a solid drive on its first possession but stalled out. On the Shepherd side of the field on a fourth and ten. We'll start this one again from the 25 yard line. And Travis, uh, a, bi a big run for Ronnie Brown, and, and that certainly gives Shepherd a good tone setter because we look back on that first game and Shepherd got down early and now taking the early lead here on the road uh, kind of helps them build that confidence. More importantly, they got that score using the run game. What that's going to do is make that Golden Bears defense that they're going to have to adjust. They're going to have to bring a safety down in the box, and that's only going to open up things more for the passing game, and that's only going to be to that Rams offense benefit. Don't put more pressure on Tyson Bajan. You know what you're going to get out of him week in and week out. Make his job a little easier. Use that run game, wear that defense down, and let him throw balls to wide open wide receivers as opposed to trying to forcing it into tight windows. Here's Nelson with a solid run up the middle out to the 31-yard line. Give him six yards on that pickup. Holloway along with Robinson in on that tackle for Shepard. It'll be second down and about two. And Nelson was just working his way into the offense early on this season when these first two when these teams first face off. Only six carries for 17 yards, but he is a low. Six foot, 245 pound redshirt senior. Here's a dump down in the flat. McDade couldn't make that initial tackle. Nice job by Hasty to break off that tackle and get the first down for Kutztown. Caden Hasty, 5'10", 175-pound redshirt sophomore. Didn't do much in the first matchup versus Shepard. One catch for 11 yards. Jerome Cap is pretty much the ace in that rotation as far as the wide receivers are concerned for the Golden Bears. First down and 10 from the 35-yard line. Nickel looking to the sideline, adjusting things at the line of scrimmage. As Nelson remains the back to the left of Nickel here on first and 10. Takes the snap. Quick pass out to the far side. Caught by Jake Novak. Nickel's pass completes to number 16. Yeah, Fox Novak. coming up on the tackle. Five, Antonio Fox. Short pickup, we second down to Nate. Derek Anderson with the catch. Last week having a solid game, three catches for 59 yards. Wasn't able to get into the book the last time these two faced off, but the big wide receiver looking to have a big game today. 6'3", 200-pound grad student looking to have a big game today in front of the home crowd. Second and eight from the 37-yard line. Nickel just at the line of scrimmage sends Anderson in motion from right to left. 
Novak and Cap, the receivers to this near side. Here's a fake pitch play. Looking for Anderson, and Anderson has the catch into Shepard territory. Down to the 42-yard line. Another first down for Kutztown. And Nelson, just looking at his size, you know he's a force in between the tackles. But that time, the fake pitch to him was enough to make that defense bite. And just that Rams defense, they're, they're, they're so geared towards the run, especially early on in the games, it just makes them susceptible to play action pass. And that's just something that they've struggled with throughout the season so far here in the game today. They've had some issues giving up some plays off a of play action pass. Coming up on four minutes to go in this first quarter, 7 nothing Shepard. Nickel hands it off to Nelson. He is stuffed. Corey Shell, along with a few other Rams flying in to make that tackle. Holloway leading the way as well. Second down and nine. And as Nelson has worked his way into the offense throughout the season, has racked up some nice numbers. 93 carries for 536 yards, four touchdowns. Also has five catches for 29 yards in the touchdown. So he does have good hands out of the backfield. Played at Temple, walked on as a tight end. Didn't get a lot of playing time here, and that's why he's here with the Golden Bears, trying to get a little burn. Second and nine. we we'll go Nelson again. He has a little bit of a better hole there, but Shepard uh, cleans it up quickly. Nasheed Bridgman makes the tackle. Bridgman usually... See him later on in games. But this Rams defense, like we said, that defensive line, they like to rotate guys in early, and they're rotating the beef in early, trying to keep those athletes fresh down the home stretch of the game. I think, too, they know Kutztown wants to run the ball, get the big physical nose tackle in. It's going to Maybe eat up some blocks. Yeah. Stop that run. Third down and six now from the 38-yard line, under three minutes to go in this opening quarter. 7 nothing Shepard. Nickel takes the snap straight drop back. Under some pressure from the blind side, and he Kyle is sacked Smith. and brought down. It's Kyle Smith, the Rams' leader in sacks. With a big play there for Shepard, and the Rams' defense will force a punt. And a couple factors playing into that. One thing we haven't mentioned that much, that was great coverage on the back end. That was more of a cover sack and giving Kyle Smith just a little bit of extra time to turn that corner and come up and make the sack. That's something that he started out red hot. As far as getting sacks, teams made that adjustment, and he kind of went quiet on that end. He still got pressure. He was still able to get in the backfield and wreak havoc against the run game, but he needs that extra time from the secondary to get the quarterback and come away with the sack. Kersick. Will punt it away to Gonteric, standing at about his own 10. He'll let it bounce, and it will roll, and it's a perfect punt for Kersick rolling down to the four-yard line. That's where Shepard will be forced to take over. A 37-yard kick, first and 10 for Shepard. It's a tough field position here for the Rams, but again, we talked about this Kutztown defense being so good, and they held Shepard to their lowest scoring output, which was 29 points. I mean, that's hard to believe that the lowest scoring output of the season was uh, 29 points, as high as that may seem. Rams with an early 7-0 lead. We know Kutztown's not a huge offensive team, so if Shepard can build on this lead early, Travis, I think that's important moving forward. And that's something that the Rams offense is so good at doing is when they're able to jump out to fast starts, they really make teams abandon their original game plan and start throwing the ball around the yard. And that's when that defensive front was really effective because they're able to pin their ears back and really attack the passing game. Hebron, not much room on that carry. Coming up and making the tackle was Dominic Italiani in there. Combined to make the tackle after a gain of a yard. Italiani, the 6'3", 255-pound redshirt sophomore from Bethlehem, PA. So he's not too far away. Just a one-yard pickup on that carry from Hebron. It will be second down and nine for the Rams with a minute 30 to go in this opening quarter. Agent. Looking to throw again, dumps it down in the flat. Ryan Beach, Ryan Beach out across the 15-yard line, close to the first down marker, and they'll give him the first down, move those chance. And that's something that the Rams offense is going to have to do today is be creative in how they get the ball to Ryan Beach. Ryan Beach has been the catalyst for this offense, which is strange to think. You have so much talent on the outside, but a redshirt red freshman excuse me, is a guy that kind of gets the ball rolling in that passing game. So if you get him, on, get him the ball on some bubble screens, on some jet sweeps, it just, open things up, it just opens things up for everybody else on the offense. Bajant sending Beach in motion from right to left. 
They'll hand it off of Hebron, and again, Kutztown able to get in that backfield. Kutztown just so stout in the box that time. Wary in on the tackle. 30 seconds to go now in the first quarter. Shepard with the 7-0 lead after two-yard pickup, second down and eight from the 17-yard line. Jonathan Moss, the receiver to the near sideline, along with Ryan Beach. McCook, the fullback, to the left of Bajant with Hebron directly behind him. I believe that's got Tarek over there on the far side. They'll run Hebron here. Hebron fighting <laughs> forward. <laughs> nice tackle on the play by Togo Jala Parte. No, Chris Thomas was the first defender to come up to try to make the tackle. Well, he did the best he could. The 6'1", 215-pound senior got trucked on that play. Hebron, he was just a very physical runner at the point of contact, and that time Thomas had to find out the hard way. So into the first quarter, we'll have a third down and 3-1 count. When we come back, we'll be back in 60 seconds. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, Programs, foster homes or retirement villages they make a difference in the lives of others in division two we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours some are dreamers some are doers and just a few are both that's the heartbeat of Shepherd University a quality education that's within reach in fact we're one of the most affordable schools in the nation whether you're just starting off or you're ready for a new start, Shepherd University. Don't just dream, do. Stadium, 7 0 Shepherd. Rams with the football here on a third down and three from the 22 yard line. Bajan in the shotgun formation. Rams now working left to right. Beach goes in motion, play action, throws over the middle, complete to Josh Gonteric with a nice catch as the pass was a little bit behind Gonteric, but he, he hauls it in with his strong hands. Update on the uh, AAA state championship game. Huntington tying it at seven in that ball game, so good one going down in Wheeling this afternoon. We'll keep you updated throughout as soon as we know new scores and throughout that ball game. First and 10 here from the 40, 14.40 to go in the second quarter. Bajan throwing quickly, complete E.J. Morgan on the near side. Morgan gets it out to about the 46-yard line. Boyd in on the tackle. And just going back to that previous play, like you mentioned, he threw the ball behind Gonteric, but I believe that was by design. If he led him to the inside, the safety was right there. So Tyson Bajan being a good quarterback, Saving his wide receiver from a big hit over the middle. Throws it back shoulder. Gonteric, you know he has tremendous range as far as making those type of catches. So you save your wide receiver, throwing him open to the outside and not leading him into a big hit. Six-yard pickup, second down and four from the 46. Bajant straight drop back. Again, throwing over the middle this time complete to Ryan Beach into cuts down territory to the 44. Tyson Bajan getting the ball out of his hands quickly, allowing his wide receivers to make plays in space. And you're seeing that this Rams offense has made its adjustments, and they're starting to have some success as far as run after catch. And that was something that that Golden Bears defense did such a good job in their previous matchup of limiting in that first contest. They also give a lot of credit to that O-line up front. We talked about last week. Uh, Notre Dame having 44 sacks heading into that ball game, and Shepard not allowing any. A week ago, Bajant dumping it down quickly again. Ryan Beach in space. Beach has the first down. Just, I mean, everything that you would want out of an athlete, he has. Speed, quickness, agility. Such height. Just, I mean, just <laughs> nimble. I mean, he just, just tiptoed down the sideline without even, without even breaking stride. It's just such a tough assignment to try to cover him in space. Beach with the big pickup for the Rams. He has been such a great player in his red shirt freshman season. 
Only going to get better as he continues to grow with this program. Ronnie Brown, the back. They'll fake it to him. Bajan to dump it down to Beach. Haven't seen that play yet this season. And it <laughs> works out a little bit, but a flag comes in from that far sideline. I was thinking they're running read option with Tyson Bajan. I I didn't it, think it, that was the case. Well, a, a lot of the plays that they have, a lot of their run plays are built-in RPOs, right. which Shepard likes to use basically like play-action pass because Tyson doesn't pull it and run it that much himself, which would make it a true RPO. But sometimes you'll see where there's a little disagreement between the running back and the quarterback because that running back wants the ball, but Tyson Bajan just has big, strong hands, and he's able to pull it out from the grasp of the running back. So holding call will take that play away. And then for a second I thought, is Ryan Beach going to throw this ball? <laughs> because they kind of <laughs> threw it back behind him a little bit. I think Ryan Beach was a little bit surprised yeah, about that play himself. I think he was expecting it to be a run. And Tyson Bajan possibly saw something where he wanted to make a play. I think it was something where he wanted to pull it and run it, but that cuts down defense is very disciplined, good at staying at home. And Tyson Bajan saw one of those linebackers like, yeah, I'm going to get it to my wide receiver. Let him take those hits. So the Rams back it up to second down and 17. Brown the back to the left of Bajan. Complete Jonathan Moss making the catch. After a short pickup, Jonathan Moss a big week a week ago. Nine catches to lead the Rams with 69 yards receiving. So a three-yard pickup there. Second down and 14 here from the 34. And a good decision that time by Tyson Bajan, not wanting to force it down the field. They had that wheel route on with Ronnie Brown coming out of the backfield, but the safety was playing over the top. Cuts down trying to bait Tyson Bajan into that throw. Tyson not taking the bait, throwing the dump down instead to get, get, get a little bit of this yardage back from that holding penalty on first down. Brown to the left of Bajan. Dump it down to Brown, tipped and nearly intercepted. Off the hands of Ronnie Brown, making that play there in the secondary. Cam Wolf, the man in coverage. That would have been one that certainly would have flipped momentum early on here, but it's going to be a tough third and 14 here for Shepard. Cam Wolf in the depth chart, have him listed as athlete. You want to get fancy with it? He's a rover. <laughs> Don't, don't try to get fancy with the terminology. He's a rover, basically a, a, Will, a Will linebacker that, that's playing a little bit of strong safety. Everybody's an athlete if you're out here. Here's Ryan <laughs> Beach. He's an athlete. Oh, my goodness. Making people miss and not over down. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't quite get away from Ryan Jennings. Sometimes you just got to take what the defense gives you when you try to get to the wide side of the field and make something happen. The guys at this level are a bit too fast for that, and that Golden Bears defense was able to close the gap and take him down behind the field. Yeah, well, I mean, there you don't hate that play, though, from Beach because there wasn't really much to this near side, and if he could have gotten away from Jennings, he might have taken that to the house. And, and he's a player, like, like you trust his vision, you trust his athleticism, so if anybody's going to go out there and swing for the fences, you're going to allow Ryan Beach to do so. Barrick will punt it away for the Rams. It's a high kick. And it's going to be a good punt from Ryan Barrick, unless Shepard didn't get that one down. Oh, they're going to call it a touchback. That was a good effort. We almost, or we saw a great punt from Kutztown earlier there uh, going in the same direction, but Bear couldn't quite get it to, or really the special teams unit couldn't quite get their feet in on that one yard line. So the Golden Bears are back offensively. From about 11 minutes to go in this first half. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. 7 0 Shepard cuts down with the football on their own 20 yard line. Beautiful day here in Kutztown, Pennsylvania. Previous play is under review. And this is something new. We know this week we'll have reviews as part of the reason why we are in the stands is because, well, they had to open up some space for a replay booth. And now we're going to take a short uh, review at this one. We'll take a 30 second break. The Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. 
where Cinderella teams dance with bracket busters and perennial powerhouses. Your fire fuels their flight. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. The Division I Men's Basketball Tournament. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash MBB tickets. Seven nothing Shepherd. And update you on that Huntington Martinsburg AAA State Championship game. Hudson Clement with his second touchdown of the afternoon to give Martinsburg the 14 7 lead in the second quarter. And they will keep it at a touchback. So cuts down with the ball on the 20 yard line. I wonder how the officials kind of adjust to this because. All season long, they haven't had reviews, and then you get into the quarterfinals, and all of a sudden, you got a, another factor. It's got to be interesting for those guys down on the field because that's probably something that they've never really dealt with up until this point in the season. Nickel takes the snap, and again, they'll run it, and not much room. Jawan Addison coming in there. To make that tackle. So we see now on the third possession or third running back for cuts down, Daryl Davis McNeil, the red shirt junior. And we saw a little bit in that first game. That was because Jordan Davis got injured. And I wonder, too, we haven't seen Davis since that opening drive. I mean, he's so explosive, you'd think they want him on the field. You mentioned Davis McNeil had nine carries for 38 yards and a touchdown the last time these two ball teams faced off. One-yard pickup there. Another high snap. Davis McNeil, a big hole into the secondary. Davis McNeil out to about midfield before being tripped up. Antonio Fox coming up and making that tackle. That's a big play to maybe spark this Kutztown offense. Shepard player down on the field. We'll keep it here momentarily. Uh, Travis. I'll tell you what, Antonio Fox made a good play yeah. in the open field. That's tough. You don't want to be coming up trying to take care of a running back with that type of speed and athleticism in open space. And Fox had a poker face on that time and just came up and tripped him up just enough. Yeah, we see Kutztown make that play, and that's Chris Lane down on the field for the Rams. So not a good sign here as he kind of hobbles off. The Rams inside linebacker, 10-19 to go in this first half, 7 nothing Shepard. As Kutztown gets it out to midfield. Lane, a big part of this Rams defense, has been battling some injuries and bumps and bruises throughout the course of this season. And Shepard will certainly miss Lane, especially to stop this rushing attack for Kutztown. Davis McNeil remains the back here on first and ten at midfield. Nickel adjusting at the line of scrimmage. Novak going in motion. Nickel throws over the middle. Just behind Jerome Cap and incomplete. Tyron McDade in coverage. Second and ten in midfield. He's second down. You could tell there was a slight bit of hesitation that time by Nickel. Just tried to aim it in there as opposed to just throwing it. Cap was open underneath. All he needed to do was just put the ball on him. The defender was playing off and behind. You got a big body wide receiver. Let him post up like a power forward. You just get him the ball on the low block and Nickel not able to connect on that pass attempt. Setting up a second along, and something that they want to avoid because that's when this Rams defense is really able to ratchet it up. And now a timeout from Shepard. So we'll take another 30-second break. 7-0 Rams, 10 minutes to go in this first half. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. Welcome back to Andre Reed Stadium. Second down and 10 from midfield. 10 minutes to go. In this first half, Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us for Rams football here in the quarterfinals of the NCAA 
NCAA Division II football playoffs. Kitztown's been at midfield what feels like forever, but it's only been one play. Second down to 10. Another high snap. Eric Nickel running here to the outside, but he won't be able to get there. Kyle Smith throws him down for what I believe will be a loss of one or two here on the play. And again, that high snap is just affecting the timing of this Golden Bears offense. And I believe, wasn't it cuts down ahead the snap issues? They had snap time? issues, and usually a lot of times, that means the center has his hands full with a nasty defensive lineman lined up over top of him. We mentioned how Bridgman was in. Also, Ricky Robinson. There's a, there's a lot of talent up front, so that center is certainly concerned. When you see that snap starting to get higher and higher and running to the edge, the Rams defense has too much speed for that type of stuff, and Kyle Smith was able to come up and make the tackle. Nickel handles a good snap that time, completes the drone cap on this near side, but it's going to be Michael well Smith, short of the first down. Right Isaiah the Nixon in there to make that Nixon. tackle. So it'll be fourth, fourth down. And, down at the Shepherd 45. and Kutztown will like to punt once again. So the Rams defense doing... A nice job early on this ball game. And got Tarek standing back now inside his own 10. Krisik will punt it away for the Golden Bears. Fourth down at five from the 45. Don't want to give Bajan in that offense a short field. So Krisik handles the punt, sends it. High kick. I think that's going to go into the end zone. It will. Way too far there for Krisik. So it'll be a touchback and just about a 25-yard 25 25-yard 25 net on that punt. So Shepard will take over now from the 20. Eight forty-seven to go in this first half. Shepard with the 7-0 lead and back on the field. Ronnie Brown with the touchdown run in this one. And again, you like what you see out of the Rams' offense, being patient, taking what the defense is giving you, using that running game. That's going to help set up the play action and give your quarterback some easy throws. Chance Schwartz in the backfield. He gets a carry and gets stuffed. No room there to the outside and not really a play that you think about with Chance Schwartz. I mean, he is a power back. He's a guy that does his work in between the tackles, but kind of a zone run that didn't really develop there on the outside, and it's a loss of a yard in second and 11. He's a zone runner, but he's an inside yeah. zone runner, something that you really don't want to get him on the edge, this Golden Bears defense. They're quick to the point of attack, and you use your big banger to try to get out on the outside, and they were up to the task on that one. So second and 11 from the 19. Bajan takes the snap, has time, throws into triple coverage and intercepted. Coming away with it is Sean Hubert Ortiz, the senior. They might have to take another look, though, at that one. I'm not certain if that football hit the turf or not. They're going to have to. Tyler Wari was the first defender to get his hand on the ball, and then Turbert Ortiz was able to pick it up possibly. I'm sure this one's going to go to the booth, but Tyson Bajan trying to squeeze it into a tight window that time. And that's something that they're able to do. Those linebackers did a good job of playing in space in the last time these two teams faced off, and that time able to force the turnover with the Golden Bears offense getting out on the field. I'd say hurry up and snap that football. Don't give them a chance to take another look at this. Eric Nickel quickly under center here, first and ten. Send the man in motion. Jordan Davis the back. Looks like Kutztown will be able to get it away, and they do. Running here to the near side is Curtis Rovenel, and that's not going to work. Malik Holloway coming up and making that play. Holloway sniffed that one out from the jump on that play again. It is so tough to get on the edge with this Rams defense. I think you kind of do yourself a disservice trying to get on the edge like that. It's something where maybe you can get a kick out and run off tackle, but as far as just running a straight-up sweep, they're too fast for that. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that play for Kutztown as they lose four yards, second down and 14. Davis back in the backfield to the right of Nickel. Three receivers go to the wide side, one to the near. Second down and 14 from the 32-yard line. Nickel takes a snap. He wants Jerome Cap, and it's just off his outstretched arms. Isaiah Nixon in coverage, but it would have been six if Nickel could have laid that one in the breadbasket. Cap working against the freshman. Had a step on him. Well, right now, nickel throwing into the wind. It looked like the wind may have got a hold of that and pushed it a little bit out of bounds. 
But when you put a team that likes to run the ball in a second and long and third and long situation, you've definitely got them out of their comfort zone. Third and 14 from the 32. Kutztown taking over after the interception by Tuber Ortiz. But a four-yard loss on their first play, and we'll see what happens here on third and 14. Nickel steps up, looking to run, oh. lost the ball. Shepard picks it up. It's Chris Lane, Lane across the 40, across midfield. Big Lane block. out to the 40, 30, 20, and finally That's tripped up. Nickel. What a way to flip momentum there Nickel. for Shepard. Bajan uh, interception. Nickel steps up looking to run. He gets the ball punched out, and Chris Lane picks it up and flips the field all the way down to about the 20-yard line on the return. Chris Lane, just a true warrior, went out early in the game. He was limping. up with an injury, <laughs> limping off the field. I'll tell you what, he shook it off in no time, able to scoop, nearly going for the score, and just a convoy of blockers getting out in front of him. That's something on big plays like that. As a coach, you're always yelling, you don't want to block in the back. You didn't have to worry about it on that play. Those were some serious blocks paving the way for Chris Lane to get a ton of yards on that play and giving his offense a short porch. Man, was that a blown opportunity for the Golden Bears. Had good field position, lose four yards on that first play, trying to get an end-around type play, and it just didn't work out. And then just some negative plays offensively and capped off by the nickel fumble, trying to step up in the pocket. So first and 10 from the 20 for this offense, the number one offense in the country. Ty Hebron to the right of Bajan. Michael McCook is to the left. Gonteric and Moss, the receivers to this near side. Hebron will run. Hebron stutter steps in the hole. Cuts it out off over left guard and gets positive yardage. Big hit by Nigel Wilson. Wilson coming up. The 6'1", 255-pound redshirt junior out of Bound Brook, New Jersey. Yards, second and eight at the 18. Two-yard pick up to the 18-yard line. Second down. With 6.35 to go in this first half, 7-0 Shepard. The Rams, though, now with great field position after Chris Lane recovering a fumble and taking it into Kutztown territory. Same formation for the Rams. Play action this time. They'll dump it down to Moss in the flat. He doesn't find too much room. Gets it down to about the 15-yard line. Be about a three-yard pickup. Be third down and five. And it's just a testament to how good this Golden Bears defense is, is that they're really making the Rams play a patient, conservative style of offense where we're used to seeing them attacking downfield, more vertical, more big plays, more big chunk plays, and they're not allowing those opportunities to come up as often as we've seen throughout the season. Third down and four. Bajan takes the snap. Has time. Finds Gontarek over the middle. Has the first down. Pass to number 19, Just the Gantaric. confidence in Bajan to number take his time, Justice, scan the field, and find Gontarek for that first. will be first and goal from the five. Good play design Nine that time. You had Wetzel five. running down the seam that's going to push those safeties back. More importantly, you had Ronnie Bound running that flare out of the backfield. That's going to open up a nice little gap for Gontarek. He's a savvy wide receiver, so he was able to work inside, find that soft spot in the zone, and Tyson Bajan nails him with the football right between the one and the nine. First and goal from the five-yard line. Ronnie Brown the back. Ronnie Brown. Up the middle, looked like he had a hole initially, but a good job by that Golden Bears D-line to kind of crash game. down on the run the and Myers hold it up as Myers coming in and making that tackle. Two, the Golden Bears goal. just so disciplined in the box. We talked about the range on the Rams defense. What's different with that Golden Bears defense, the guys in the box, they stay in the box. You can certainly tell that they are run-first players. They're staying inside that tackle box, and they allow that their corners, and they allow their safeties to make those tackles on the edge. But they stay true right there in the middle, so it's going to be tough to find some running lanes, especially with that zone running scheme, the way the Rams like to pound it. Shepard wants to go power football here on second down and goal. Josh Pulse, the receiver of the far side. Well, now they'll take a timeout, but... McCook was in there along with Brian Walker. Let's take a 30-second break. It's 7-0 Shepard, 429 to go in this first half. Shepard University Rams football, TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Dear college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. 
we've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college, college sports. sports. We welcome you back to Andre Reed Stadium as we get ready for the second down and goal from the three-yard line. 4.29 to go in this first half. 7-0 Shepard. The Rams are on the doorstep of extending that lead out to two scores after a Chris Lane fumble recovery. Sets up Shepard inside the 20-yard line. And now the Rams have... An interesting look here on second down and goal. Heber on the back. They'll throw quickly to Josh Pulse, and that is going to be sniffed out. And now I think the ball might have came out. Dangerous pass complete to number seven, Josh Pulse. I think a Ram lineman was able to get to the bottom of that pile and fall on it, but certainly Game a dangerous the play. play there. At the two. And a one-yard pickup, third down and goal. Shepard trying to... Get a Police look the there, an and they're just going to rule that incomplete. So, yeah, I didn't really think Pulse had it very long, if at all, because when I looked down there, he was standing without a football in his hands. So it'll be third down and goal with about 3.45 to go. Seven nothing Rams. Shepard will most likely, I think, go for it here if they are faced with a fourth down. And they're going to have to reset the clock to 4.21. So putting some significant time back on this clock with the Rams leading 7 nothing, And we'll see what Coach Jesse Correll has for the offense here. Hebron is the back to the left of Bajan. Michael McCook, the fullback, lined up on that wing. Brian Walker in a tight end. Gonteric, the lone receiver to the far side. The run Hebron, and I don't think he got there. Going to be about a yard or two short of the end zone. Worley coming in and making that tackle along with Nigel Wilson. Fourth down and goal now. Shepard going quickly. Hebron take, or Bajan takes the high snap, rolls out to the right, and he'll die for the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. A great job by Tyson Bajan to go quickly, get on the ball, take the snap, and probably... Catch cuts down sleeping a little bit on his ability to scramble to the outside and get into the end zone. Shepard takes a 13 0 lead here on the road at Kutztown with 3.55 to go in this first half. Tyson Bajan, an athletic quarterback, makes his hay as a pure pocket passer, but has the athleticism to pull it down, make some plays in the run game. That's his third rushing touchdown on the season. Hayden August Scriven on to attempt the point after the kick is up. And it is good. 14-0 Shepard. 3.55 to go in the first half. We'll take another 30-second break. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Welcome back to Andre Reed Stadium. Shepard with the 14-0 lead over a cuts down. And, man, did this game and momentum really shift. It feels kind of like the first one, only it's the opposite, right? Because Shepard had a chance to get a field goal earlier and or in that first game, and then they had the blocked field goal return for a touchdown. In this game, Shepard throws an interception, sets up, cuts down at about the 30-yard line. And the Golden Bears fumble. Chris Lane takes it down to about the 20-yard line. And Shepard takes a 14-0 lead. We'll see if it plays out similarly as that first game only, this time in the Rams' favor. And this kickoff return here gets out to about the 28-yard line. And it's Curtis Rovenel Jr. on that return. Duckworth in on the tackle. But Chris Lane, I tell you what, you just can't count him out. Well, he's, a, he's a warrior through and through. Battling that injury, picked the ball up. You saw no ill effects on that run as he is able to turn on the Jets. 
And right now, this is when this Rams team is particularly dangerous because once they jump up on you, teams have a tendency to try to abandon their game plan and to start chasing points. And that's when that athletic defensive front really starts to come into play where they're able to pin their ears back, get after the quarterback. And now this Golden Bears offense is kind of taken out of their comfort zone where they're having to go to the air more as opposed to run the ball, which they like to do. And Shepard gets the ball to second. Start the second half. We have a new quarterback, and it's picked off. The Rams jump the route and will take that back to the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard. Donnie Blaine threw a pick. Bladden, Bladden jumped the route and takes it in for six. 20-0, Shepard. We talked about it earlier. Nickel took a big shot from Chris Lane earlier in the game. and You could just tell he wasn't moving around, wasn't feeling himself. He's coming off of a game last week where he was sacked five times. So you have to wonder how many more hits that big quarterback could take. He has to come out. They put in a new quarterback. This is an intense football game. It's going to take him a while to get warmed up. And that Rams defense was ready to pounce. I'm not certain if that was an injury replacement or what because Nickel is walking around on the sideline and has his helmet on. And I can't imagine you would bench him in a game like this just because of one mistake, but I don't know. It could sound going to Blaine, who's played a little bit this year, but it hasn't been like spectacular or anything as the Rams will attempt this extra point and kick it through the uprights, but I just... I would think it's an injury, but, again, he's walking around with his helmet on. Usually if you're injured, you're not going to have your helmet on. He took a big shot from Chris Lane earlier in the game and really seemed to suffer the ill effects of that hit. And like we mentioned, five sacks from last week. At this point in the season, you've played a ton of football, so those bumps and bruises are beginning to mount up for yeah. a lot of these players. So it might have been something where maybe they thought that they could steal a possession bring in a quarterback and let Nickel maybe catch his breath. But in a game like this where the, the teams are so evenly matched, when you go to your backup quarterback, you're inviting some bad things to happen, and that Rams defense was able to capitalize immediately. So Cuts down now finds itself down 21-0. We know they're not a high-powered offense. This certainly is not playing in the Golden Bears' favor. The Rams will get the ball. Uh, to begin the second half as well. So. And Martinsburg taking a 26-7 lead uh, in the state championship game. So really starting to dominate against the Huntington Highlanders there in the AAA state championship up in Wheeling. So, again, we'll keep you updated on that. But at least so far it looks like the Bulldogs might bring home that ninth state title. 3.43 to go in this first half. Shepard with a 21-0 lead. Heat August Scrimmon will kick it away. It's a short kick. Going to be fielded there on that far side. Coming back to the near side, a big hole. All of a sudden opens up for the return man, Rovenel. Again, it's Duckworth to come up and make that tackle. So now I'm curious to see who's going to be the signal caller for that Golden Bears offense. Right now the coaching staff over there talking to their troops, trying to get them to steady the ship. If they can go down the field and get one touchdown going into halftime, it's going to make you breathe a little bit easier. Well, it is going to be Donnie Blaine, and it just wouldn't make sense to me that if Nickel makes one mistake, he would get benched. So I'm thinking it I has think to hurt. be an injury. Maybe he's staying ready. Maybe he could play through it, but just doesn't feel 100%. That could be the case as the Rams stack this one up. Corey Shell, who's made a big impact on this one, coming up and making that tackle for the Rams will be second down at 10. And Rams defender, excuse me, Rams defender, Ricky Robinson coming off to the sideline. But that's when this Rams defense is really banging on all cylinders is when they're able to protect the lead. That's a defense. That's basically how they're built. They're built to protect Lee because they know that they're going to be going against opponents that are trying to chase points, and that's why they have those athletic defenders on the edge that can chase after the quarterback, good safeties playing over the top so they can be a ball hawk, just really playing into the hands of that Rams defense right now. Here's the run and running hard. Zaire Jones. Yeah, Zaire Jones. We saw him have a big impact in 
that regular season matchup between these two teams. That's his first carry of the afternoon here in this quarterfinal matchup. Bad coming up and making that tackle. 2.45 to go in the first half. 21 nothing. Shepard leading cuts down. In a tough situation are the Golden Bears, but out there starting quarterback now and Eric Nickel and down 21 points. But if they could reestablish that run game that worked early on, again, we haven't really seen Jordan Davis That's in the game. That's what I'm saying. You, you lose your starting running back. He's nowhere to be found. You lose your starting quarterback. Some tough breaks here in a big game. That one's tipped at the line and could have been intercepted by Frankie Stevens on that back Those side. Give credit to the tip by I feel like Mike Forbes, the 6'2", 243-pound redshirt freshman. Being a so hand Chet in there. On Maryland. And that's something you want your defenders doing. You know if you're going up against a quick passing game, you're not able to get pressure in the quarterback's face right away. What you want to do, get a nice push up the field. Then you want to get your hands up and try to bat down those quick passes. 2.17 to go in this first half. Second down and 10 from the 47. Blaine looking to throw again. Has time, throws it over the middle. A big hit and an incompletion. Corey and Shell is there again, along with Frankie Stevens. The crowd wants a flag, but no throw. Jake Novak was the intended receiver. And there could have been some flags on a couple of defenders on that play because the wide receiver that was working down the field was getting jobbed the whole way down. It looked like Zaire Jones was trying to go down deep. And he was getting ridden the entire way down the field. Also, the big hit over the middle. That's something that referees are keeping an eye out for nowadays, protecting those defenseless wide receivers. So surprised that at least one of those instances didn't deserve a penalty. Third down and 10 from the 47. Blaine adjusting at the line of scrimmage. Davis back in the ball game. And a timeout is taken. By Kutztown. So we'll take a 30 second break. This is Shepherd University Ranch football on TV 10 and WRR TV on YouTube. Welcome back to Andre Reed Stadium. As uh, Kutztown trailing Shepherd 21 0. I'm going to review that play for potentially. Penalty. Like I said, the wide receiver had to check that. It wasn't Zaire Jones. It was Jake Novak. Yeah, wide Novak receiver. took the hit, I believe. So they'll have to review and and see if, I guess, that was a uh, and that, on defensive receiver. And, and, that, and that's tough for the defender, too, because, I mean, it's a bang-bang type of play. You certainly don't want to give up the catch over the middle. So, I mean, you're doing everything that you've been coached to do, and it's hard. You're going full speed. You want to be able to either, A, make a play on the ball yourself or at least dislodge it from the wide receiver if he's able to get the hands on the ball. We saw, too, Ponce de Leon receive that penalty in the first round matchup against Finley. Now, luckily for him, he was, or it was reviewed, and it was not going to be enough to get him suspended for last week's game, which was huge because De Leon had a good ball game, uh, making a lot of tackles, and is obviously one of the leaders on this defense. So now, I think it would either go on Corey Shell or Frankie Stevens here, who have been really good, solid players in this ball game, especially Shell making a lot of big plays. Uh, kind of helping that rotation, helping Chris Lane stay fresh as he kind of fights through injuries and cramps that he's gone through all season. So it's a big uh, review. Obviously, it could give Cuts down a first down and some momentum as well. Just a tall order for this Golden Bears offense. You lose your starting running back, lose your starting quarterback. Well, Davis is back in the game. Okay. But – Hasn't played a whole lot for whatever reason. We have targeting. That is going to be targeting. Of Shepard. Number 33 has been disqualified. That is a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So the Golden Bears needed a break, and they certainly got a break. The Rams lose a defender, and they also give up a big first down and a, and a big chunk of yards. And it's going to be tough. Like we mentioned, Jordan Davis had some issues with cramping early on in the season, but at that point in the year it was still a little bit warmer outside, so you, 
you expect that that's going to be an issue sometimes during the course of a game. But now the weather's a little bit cooler. Cramping is still possibly going to be an issue. So maybe that's something that kind of knocked him out of the rotation. And Davis back in the backfield, but Corey Shell losing him. He's made a big impact on this ball game. And I've never been a big fan of that targeting rule. I understand the penalty, but I don't understand why a player gets ejected, especially when it's clearly not intentional. It's just him trying to make a play. So I don't really like that rule, but it is the rule, and that will – uh, remove Shell from this ball game. First down and 10 from the 38. Blaine and Davis in the backfield. The officials discussing again something here. And I can kind of understand disqualifying a player from a game because a lot of times on a hit like that, the offensive player is going to be out for the game That's because enough. they're going to go through concussion protocol. So, I mean, it kind of be unfair if you – have a targeting penalty, and, and, a, and a premier player for the opposing team goes out, but yet that defender gets to remain in the game. So I, I can see it both ways, certainly. Blaine takes the snap. He'll look to run, pull it down, and this is what Donnie Blaine can do. A little bit quicker than Nickel. Both of them have the ability to run. Duckworth chases him down here on the near side, down to about the 31-yard line. Blaine has gotten some action. He had to play against IUP due to a Nickel injury early in the season. And that was, of course, the only loss of the year for the Cutsdown Golden Bears, but just a three-point loss to a solid IUP team early in the season. Second down and three from the 31. Another high snap, quick dump off, incomplete. And that's going to be a tough. A lot of these plays are like rhythm and chemistry and just a familiarity with your wide receivers. And you can tell Blaine probably not getting a lot of first-team reps coming into today's game. And when you go to those quick bang-bang type plays, sometimes that – that chemistry and timing isn't going to match up right away. So a good job calling that run play to kind of get him settled down, get some confidence going. But you might have to adjust the passing game until he gets into a rhythm in that aspect of the offense. Third and three from the 31, a very important drive for the Golden Bears, down 21-0 to the number one offense in the country in the Shepherd University Rams. Blaine throws quickly, complete. To Novak on that far side for the first down. That was a good ball. He's throwing. He's got the wind at his back. He's throwing to the wide side of the field, letting his wide receiver make a play on the ball. Novak able to come up with it. The redshirt junior didn't do too much last week, but in his first matchup versus Shepard, had three catches, 12 yards, but he also had a touchdown. First and 10 now from the 26 after the five-yard pickup. 133 to go and counting in this first First half, cuts down driving against this Rams defense. Blaine with trips stacked to the near side. Kyle Smith providing the heat. Can't quite get the sack, but two flanks come in. This is going to be holding. Novak's open for the touchdown. Cuts down, but it will come back. And it's coming back. He knows it. Kyle Smith is just so hard to contain coming in off the edge. And the offensive lineman had no choice but to bring him down. He's trying to give his young quarterback a little bit of extra time to make a play. Yeah, that's one I think you'll take too when you look back on it on film because Kyle Smith's coming off that edge. You know, young quarterback may not be aware of his blind side. That's a situation where you could have a sack fumble and and that could set up Shepard again. So you definitely don't want that. You'll take that holding. And most quarterbacks would agree with you. (laughs) And have the first down and 20 opposed to a potential turnover or at least a big loss on the play and also lose the down. So first and 20 for the Golden Bears. They'll move the ball from the near side hash to the far side hash. With 113 to go in this first half, Donnie Blaine looks to the sideline and now comes in with the play. Three receivers to this near side. Jordan Davis, the back in the backfield, lining up to the right of Blaine. Cap is the lone receiver to that far side. Blaine takes the snap. Has time, now rolling out to the right. Blaine will throw toward the end zone for Anderson, and it's incomplete. Well too far. And it'll be second and 20 from the 36. And we've seen a couple passes sail a little bit long for the Golden Bears quarterback. Early on, it was Nickel going to this near sideline. That time, Blaine trying to throw one to the back of the end zone. 
They do have the wind at their back and look like that one sailed a little bit. But Blaine has shown flashes that he that he does have ability. He's mobile, can, can pick up first downs with his legs, and he's also made a couple throws and showing off the arm strength. A much different physical presence in the backfield. Blaine, 6'2", 200 pounds, as opposed to Nickel being 6'4", 250 pounds. Second down at 20, Blaine. Looking for Davis here on the near side. Finds it complete. Good block. Sprain Davis. There goes Davis inside the 20-yard line. And again, you wonder what kept him out of this ball game because Jordan Davis, just such an explosive player for Kutztown, and a big part of their offense when they get him the ball and get him involved, especially it seems like against Shepard. And they're an 18-yard pickup to make it third and two after a second down and 20. Under a minute to go in this first quarter. First half, I should say. Just a nice screen pass. Give your quarterback an easy throw. Allow him to get some confidence. Allow him to get into a rhythm. Settle into the game a little bit. This is an important drive for this Golden Bears offense. They have to get something on the board going into halftime. Shepard gets the ball to start the second half. High snap. They'll give it to Davis. Spin move in the hole. Has the first down. Coming up and making that tackle was Lynch. Jordan Davis, just a tremendous Getting jump cut the in the middle the of the field to pick up that extra yardage. It looked like the Rams' defense might have had him stopped in the backfield. But again, Davis is that running back that can make that defender miss and pick up extra yards when they're not there immediately. Blaine looking end zone on the fade route incomplete. Cap, the intended receiver, John Chaney, in coverage. will be second down and 10. You want to go to your big wide receiver in the back corner, but John Chaney, good defense that time. He's giving up a little bit of size. Chaney about 5'10", going up against a 6'3", 220, excuse me, 6'3", 200-pound Jerome Cap. Chaney had some issues covering those tall wide receivers for Notre Dame a week ago. Has yet to really have an issue in this ball game, though. Has done a silent job out there on the outside. Second down and 10 from the 15. 36 seconds to go in the first Three half. Three seconds on the play clock. Blaine gets it away. Throws toward the end zone incomplete. No flag on the play. Pretty much the same look. Cap one-on-one -on -one with Cheney. It's third and 10 for Kutztown. It'll be third down and 10. Just 33 seconds to go. Kutztown trying to get it into the end zone if possible here. I'm surprised that they haven't tried to run the ball at least one more time. I mean, they have one timeout yeah. left, and you go down and just or go. Or maybe even try, like, something underneath or over the middle, but really just going for those end zone routes. Still could get a first down. It's a little bit surprised as well that they haven't gone to maybe a running play or something like that, but now can't go to the run. Blaine throws over the middle, complete. End zone, touchdown, puts down, well, what, Novak. <laughs> well, what do we know? <laughs> Three straight passes and that third one pays off. Novak doing a good job just working over the middle. And Blaine just throwing a good pass over the middle, taking advantage of the hole in the zone of that Shepard defense and getting a much-needed touchdown for that Golden Bears offense. So Kutztown getting on the board here, 21-6 with 28 seconds to go in this first half. And, you know, this game quickly really flipping. I mean, this was 7-0 Shepard for a long time. But Kutztown able to get back on the board and bring it within two scores here just before the half. 28 seconds to go, 21-7 Shepard. We'll take a 30-second break and be back with more Shepard University Ranch football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. College sports fans, get ready for game day with officially licensed merchandise from the NCAA official online shop, ncaa.com slash shop. Get the whole family geared up with the best collection of apparel and accessories, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, headwear, championship gear, and more. Visit the NCAA shop for today's special offer and rep your favorite team now. Only at ncaa.com slash shop. Number 99, Dean Krisik will kick off for Kutztown. 21-7. Shepard leads Kutztown here at Andre Reed Stadium. But the Golden Bears getting on the board is with the Blaine touchdown pass to Jake Novak. St. Louis back deep for the Rams here with 28 seconds. That sounds familiar. 
And that was a drive that was that was energized by a big penalty by that Rams defense, a targeting call. Shell gets disqualified for the contest and also gives a big 15-yard chunk to that Golden Bears offense, and they were able to do the rest. And just goes to show that when you give good teams more opportunities, bad things are going to happen. So Shepard with it on their own 25-yard line. We'll see. I don't expect the Rams to try to force anything, knowing that they also get the ball to start the second half. I don't know. They did a lot with 28 seconds last week. That's so what they, I <laughs> was hinting at before the kickoff. But, again, completely a different scenario here. You have to wonder a little bit about Shepard's defense in the final two minutes. And obviously, a huge play on that drive was that target. To play clock to 25 and but on my whistle. going back to last week's game, Notre Dame was able to score right before halftime with a minute to go. They obviously were able to score to take the lead with about 28 seconds to go. So, some two-minute defensive issues for the Rams here, but they'll run the ball. Ronnie Brown, he can make a play with every time he gets the football. Ronnie Brown out to midfield. And if you remember and Travis just last week, he set up <laughs> the scoring drive of a kick return out to about the 45-yard line. Now 18 seconds from midfield. I if think the next Shepard's going to think about it. I'm going to say if the next pass goes to Ryan Beach, <laughs> I'm just walking out of here. I've seen this movie well, before. The next pass goes to Josh Cantera. <laughs> Shepard, the clock's rolling, but it, it should have been stopped, I believe, because Brown stepped out of bounds. Yeah, yeah. Runner ran out of bounds on the previous play. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock. A little bit of home cooking. From there the you game go. Clock, a little bit. You smell the aroma of home <laughs> cooking in so the yeah, air. I saw this movie before, too. I don't want to watch it again. <laughs> I think this should be more time here on the clock, but they're only going to put 15. I don't think that play took 13 seconds. Yeah. Ronnie Brown's a little faster than play. that. Now they got to review to know yeah. how much time was on the clock. Yeah. Probably closer to 20 seconds yeah. as opposed to 15. So this Rams offense, it, it, it is not a tall order for them to pick up yards in chunks in this type of end-of-half situation. A lot of teams this are in a false sense of security saying, if we, you know, we're just going to play prevent and keep everything in front of us. Well, if you do that with this Shepard Rams offense, they will take 30-yard chunks and be right down at your goal line with, with time to spare. So I don't think that you can afford to say that you're just going to play off. It's, you, you, have to, you have to risk a little bit. But you're going to have to play basically your, your your regular defense and just hope that your squad is able to tackle well and play discipline and don't let anything get behind them. But you certainly can't go to a, to a true prevent defense because you're going to give up yards a whole lot faster than what you intended. 18 seconds now after they add three more to the game clock. Bajan looking to throw out. Fires quickly complete. E.J. Morgan has the first Bajan down. He'll step out. To number one, E.J. Morgan. He steps out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Gain of 10. First and 10 for the Rams. Cutsdown playing off. They're going at Harris. Harris had a tough time versus this Rams offense in their last matchup during the regular season. So one of the things that you can do to counter that when the defense is playing off, you can throw those comebacks. You can throw things to the sideline where you're able to get the first down, move the chains, and also get out of bounds and stop the clock. 40-yard line, 13 seconds to go. Bajan looking toward Morgan. Now steps it up, a little jump pass underneath Ronnie Brown. Man, is he fast, and he gets out of bounds at around the 25-yard line. Six seconds. Here would be a 44-yard field goal for Hayden August Scriven. Going to be tough. He's going to have the wind in his face. The ball's going to be set up on that right half, so he's going to have to hook it back a little bit. Number 36, Hayden August Scriven in to attempt a 44-yard field goal. And they need to hurry up. Only nine attempt. seconds on that play clock. That's a good point. Is this rolling down to three, two? They get it away. August Scriven is going to be blocked because of kind of a mis miscommunication. And Lloyd picks it up again. This guy has hurt the Rams on blocked field goals before. 
Lloyd dancing around to about the 43-yard line flag coming in here late. I mean, that's just poor clock management by Shepard. And I think the center and the holder realized that that play clock was winding down, so they take the snap. And the guys on the and edge the kicker ready wasn't ready block. for it either. Hayden August Scriven kind of had a delayed reaction, and the blockers weren't ready, so therefore it results in a block by Kutztown. Then this half flag coming in there late. I think it's going to be something that won't really matter here as we head to halftime. But you hope now if you're the Rams that that field goal miscommunication doesn't hurt as we get later into this ball game. The result of the play was a block kick by the defense. After the block, Personal foul, continued participation without a helmet. Number 96 on the defensive team. That's a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Since the clock expired on the play, we will have one on time down. All right, well, so cuts down a little bit. just in need. Yeah. Essentially. I'm not certain why they're making them run this play, but... I guess I don't. Is it something where the defense uh, the the defense half can't handle on a yeah. defensive penalty? Yep, we went over this before, but in, in some what. ways it's kind of an offensive penalty because <laughs> yeah. they had the ball when the yeah. penalty I guess occurred. You know, Anton Lloyd eyes got real big when he was able to get that <laughs> block kicked. He's like, I've seen this movie before. <laughs> He was doing everything he could. I'm surprised we didn't see a lot of laterals or anything like that on the play with the defenders just trying oh, to. Oh, you don't want to <laughs> lose the ball and then let Shepard recover. Correction. Shepard has decided to decline the penalty. Therefore, that's the end of the half. Hey, here we go. A little chess match there. Somebody's been reading the rule book before today's game. So, I'm trying to find Colin McLaughlin, and then we'll go to him and kind of hear. I think he has Coach McCook. All right, you guys, I'm down here with Coach McCook after the half, up by two scores, rough ending there to allow one late. How do you like your team's performance so far, though? Really proud of our team. You know, we're playing the number one team in the region. Uh, we're playing here because they're a good football team. Our team's playing really uh, with a lot of grit and determination. we got to make some plays. We've had some breakdowns. We've got a second half to play up by 14. So we got to not look at the scoreboard, not look at the clock, come out and make plays. You get the ball to start in the second half. What are you going to tell your offense going in to make sure they get more points up on the board? Make plays. All right, thank you, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Back up to you guys. I like the analysis there from Coach McCook. Make plays. <laughs> and, and that usually leads to success. It has all season for the Rams. 21-7 Shepard here at the half. We'll take a quick two-minute break. On the other side of that break, Travis and I will kind of break down this first half as we uh, head in to the halftime show. This is Chevy University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Summer dreamers, summer doers, and just a few are both. That's the heartbeat of Shepherd University, a quality education that's within reach. In fact, we're one of the most affordable schools in the nation. Whether you're just starting off or you're ready for a new start, Shepherd University. Don't just dream, do. Dear college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college sports. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. We'll go back to Andre Reed Stadium here at the half. Shepard with the 21-7 lead. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith here with the halftime uh, update for you, or halftime recap, I guess we should say. Um, Shepard 
able to go up early with the Ronnie Brown touchdown run, and that gave the Rams that nice 7 nothing lead, and it, it certainly kind of bit built some momentum. And then uh, the Rams taking a 14 nothing lead on another touchdown and going up eventually 21 to nothing after a few turnovers by Kutztown. Pick six for the Rams as well, helping in this ball game. Um, so some issues for Kutztown there, but a good drive there by Donnie Blaine and the offense to get those points before the half and get them kind of back in the ball game because really their defense has only given up 14 points. And, I mean, in that situation, you had a fumble that set up a touchdown, getting it down to the 20-yard line and a pick six. So this could easily have been a 6 nothing, or 7 nothing game here in halftime opposed to a 21-7 or 7-7 seven, seven game, I should say. And, I mean, Cutstown coach Jim Clements has to be pretty pleased with his team's resiliency. You lose your starting quarterback, you have to go to your backup. It starts off about as bad as, as a, a quarterback can start off, throws a pick six on his first pass attempt, but they were able to steady the ship and get that important touchdown at the end of the half. And right now, you come back into the second half, you can just play football. You don't have to abandon your game plan. You're down by a couple of scores. And like you mentioned, the defense has played well. They haven't given up too many chunk plays. They've made Shepard march it down the field, and they're not giving up any type of crazy over-the-top plays. So it's something where you can still you feel you can go into the second half and try to get some things done, try to go to your running game more. We mentioned how Davis was out after initially starting the game. He brings a dynamic element to that running game when he's out there on the field. I think we're going to have to go back to him. I know he's had issues with cramping before in the past when the weather was warm, but you still have those same type of issues here when the weather gets a little bit cooler as far as cramping. So see if Davis can come out and get things going. But they have several running backs that they can go to, but you know that that Golden Rams offense wants to get back to the running game that's going to help protect that young quarterback and set up that play-action pass, which is something that the Golden, Bear, that the Golden Bears – offense had success with earlier and that's something that the Rams defense has just struggled with all season long. So you want to try to get back to that in the second half. Yeah definitely and overall I think really Shepard's defense doing a lot of good things obviously forcing two turnovers you know typically they don't force a ton of turnovers but so far in the postseason they've been able to force a few in some key situations and also getting a defensive score that doesn't happen very often for Shepard but they got one in this ball game to help out the offense a little bit and help build that lead. So you really got to be happy with that uh, Rams defense because their only scoring drive for Kutztown was kind of a, as a result of a uh, targeting call that helped set them up because it would have been third and long if that call hadn't been made. And another thing, the Rams defensive front able to get home. That means that the defenders on the back end able to do their job locking up those veteran wide receivers and giving those defensive linemen just that little bit of extra time that they need to get to the quarterback. So they've been able to pressure the quarterback. That was going to be a big question coming into today's game is how the Golden Bears are going to be able to protect the quarterback, especially after last week's game versus New Haven. They gave up five sacks. So you knew the Rams were frothing at the mouth to get after the quarterback today. Nichols got knocked out. Chris Lane, I believe, had a big shot on him earlier. And I just think this the accumulation of punishment from the season made him step out of today's game and Blaine coming in. So they're able to get after the quarterback, and that's really in that Rams wheelhouse. It's one is when they're able to play with the lead and they're able to pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. And Kyle Smith able to get another sack on the season. He started out the year red hot. You saw teams make an adjustment. He's an undersized defensive end, so you don't have to make too many adjustments. The way he's coming in off the edge, you can usually use a running back or fullback that can chip him and slow him down. But when you have to play him straight up in one-on-one, -on -one, uh, blocker versus defender, he's going to win most of those matchups. He's a very skilled pass rusher coming off the edge. And one thing, Travis, here that shows, I guess, how close this game really is, despite it not being close on the scoreboard, like it's just a few plays making the difference, the total yardage. Shepard has 213 total yards in that first half. Kutztown has 184. So it's not a huge margin between those two teams.
In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. Inside the 30, touchdown. Michaela Burgess. An incredible finish by Hall. The NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. College sports fans, get ready for game day with officially licensed merchandise from the NCAA official online shop, ncaa.com slash shop. Get the whole family geared up with the best collection of apparel and accessories, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, headwear, championship gear, and more. Visit the NCAA shop for today's special offer and rep your favorite team now, only at ncaa.com slash shop. Welcome here to the TV10 scoreboard show at halftime. Shepard leads cuts down in the NCAA Division II football playoffs quarterfinal 21-7 to at halftime. We're having connection issues back at the stadium. We'll give you a scoreboard update. Hopefully by the time we get done with that, the they will be back connected to us. But Shepard got it all started. 6-14 left in the first quarter when Ronnie Brown took a rush. 43 yards for score. And August Scribbins... Hayden August Scribbins' PAT was good to make it 7-0 Shepard, and they would take that into the second quarter as a lot of scoring in the last few minutes of the second quarter. A fourth down and one at the one-yard line, fourth down and goal. Shepard quarterback Tyson Bajant ran on a revert or on a uh, bootleg play. He ran in for a score. That August Scribbins' PAT was good to make it 14 to nothing. And Donnie Blaine. His pass was intercepted by Clayton Batten, and he returned it all the way for a touchdown to make it 20 to six, or excuse me, at yeah, 20 to six, or no, 20 to nothing for Shepard on top. August Scribbins' PAT was good to make it 21 to nothing, and then uh, Blaine's pass completed to Jake Novak for 15 yards was made it 21 to seven after the Capitolano. PAT was up in good. So 21-7, your score at halftime. We'll take a look at some other Division II scores within the NCAA 2021 Division II football championships as uh, number one Valdosta State has a 14-3 lead over number two Bowie State uh, with about 13-35 left in the second. And the only other game in the bracket going on, there's one more today as uh, – Number one Ferris State in the bottom left part of the bracket has a 14 to six lead over Northwest Minnesota, Missouri State, excuse me, or yeah, Northwest Most State. 14-11 uh, left in the second quarter, and uh, getting ready to get underway here in about 20 minutes is uh, number one Colorado School of Mines hosting number two Angelo State. We'll keep you updated on those scores when we come back for the post-game show, but want to get you an update from Wheeling at the Super 6 as 
The Martinsburg Bulldogs have a 41-14 lead over the Huntington Highlanders as uh, Bajent's having a great day there. He's had a, a few touchdown passes, but uh, Avion Blackwood, he uh, we talked with head coach Britt Sherman yesterday on the Sports Mix as they were heading up to Wheeling, and he was getting a start, and he's already performed well. Had an interception late in the first half. That set up Murphy Clement, late touchdown pass, and... Uh, Murphy Clement right now has a super six record, five touchdown passes or five touchdowns responsible for three running, two receiving. We'll keep you updated on that. That one's getting ready to come back to start the third quarter as well. Uh, that's a big one. We'll obviously keep you updated on that. They'll keep you updated during the game. Let's look at some uh, NCAA Division One football scores. Is right now the only game going on. Number five, Oklahoma State hosting number twenty-one. Baylor in that conference champ in the Big 12 conference championship as Baylor has a 21 to 6 lead there. Some other conference championships, Pac-12 conference championship took place last night. 17, number 17 Utah hosting number 10 Oregon, or number 10 Oregon hosting number 17 Utah. That's a 38 to to 10 victory for Utah. Get the upset there. Other games coming on later today at 3 p.m. Utah State at number 19 San Diego State for the Mountain West Championship. The Sun Belt Conference Championship has number 24 Louisiana against Appalachian State 3:30. 4 p.m. the SEC Championship number one Georgia and number three Alabama. That'll be huge for the college football playoff rankings. At 4 p.m. number 21 Houston and number four Cincinnati doing battle for the American Athletic Conference Championship tonight at 8 p.m. Number two, Michigan. Number 13, Iowa, doing battle for the Big Ten Conference Championship. The ACC Conference Championship also at 8 p.m. Number 15, Pitt, against number 16, Wake Forest. Let's look at some other conference championships that have that are going on. The MAC Championship has Northern Illinois up 17-0 over Northern Illinois. Uh, uh, let's look at some other uh, USC in California. I don't believe that is a conference championship game, but that's going on as well or will be going on at 11 p.m. tonight. And the only other game, the Conference USA championship was completed last night. UTSA gets the 49-41 to victory over Western Kentucky to claim the Conference USA title. And that does it here as Shepard has a 21-7 to lead at halftime. After a break, we will send it back out to cuts town where they'll get going for the second half just to remind, remind everybody we'll also keep you updated on that martinsburg state championship game against huntington martinsburg has a 41 to 14 lead at half time that should be a good second half see if hudson clement he's definitely playing for his brother who's out with an injury and see if he can add more to a super six record five touchdowns responsible for that does it back here and we'll send it to a two-minute break. And then after that two-minute break, we'll send it back out to Andre Reed Stadium in Cutstown, Pennsylvania. Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. Inside the 30. Touchdown. Michaela Burgess. An incredible finish by Hall. The NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Where Cinderella teams dance with bracket busters and perennial powerhouses. Your fire fuels their flight. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. The Division I Men's Basketball Tournament. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash MBB tickets. We welcome you back to Andre Reed Stadium here at the half. Shepard leading Kutztown 21-7. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith here on the halftime show. Just heard from Spencer Dupuis. 
uh, back in the studio doing a great job for us. Our crew today, Matt Miller, Daryl Miller, and Colin McLaughlin along with Donald Kenny. All those guys putting in some hard work here as Shepard with the 21-7 lead. And we'll take a look back at the stats. And one thing we highlighted in the pregame, Travis, was Shepard has to get the ball going uh, to Ronnie Brown and get that running game going. And Brown has been great, but he only has three carries in this first half for 70 yards, 43 of those coming on the touchdown run. Hebron, seven carries, 20 yards. So Shepard overall is running the ball pretty well. Ten, ten, ten attempts for uh, 90 yards in that first half, but you like to maybe see them running a little bit more, especially now with a 14-point lead. You don't have to be nice about it. Get Ronnie Brown to <laughs> dag on ball. I mean, what more does he have to do with it? Every time he's touching it, he's making something happen. 23.3 yards per carry? Not bad. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> that's a good day at the office. <laughs> Get in the ball more. Get him the ball more. Good things happen. And he's also helping out in the passing game because when you flare him out of the backfield, somebody has to account for him, and that's pulling somebody out of the box, and that's going to open things up for guys like Gonteric and Moss to make catches over the middle. So he's impacting the ball. He's impacting the play even when he's not touching the ball. I'm not sure what else he has to do to get on the field more often because he's just playing an outstanding game and, more importantly, keeping those pass attempts down for Tyson Bajor. Right now, usually we talk about how he has game numbers at the half. He still has good numbers so far, but only 19 pass attempts so far. So he's right on track to have a regular human game at the quarterback <laughs> instead of 50-plus pass attempts. And that's just not good offensive football when your quarterback is having to drop back and throw the ball that many times. So a good balanced attack on offense for the Shepherd Rams football team. And they're on top right now 21-7 to because of that. Bajan with a rushing touchdown on his one carry, one carry for one yard and one touchdown. So that's... Not a bad rushing day for him, right? You'll take that. Uh, leading the way in the receiving category for Shepard, Ryan Beach, four catches, 28 yards. Josh Gonteric, three catches, 35 yards. E.J. Morgan, two catches, 16 yards. Jonathan Moss, two catches for seven yards. Bajan at the half, 15 of 19. Uh, one interception, 123 yards passing and the rushing touchdown. And then defensively for Shepard, Corey Shell led the way at tackles at the half, but he is done for the ball game due to uh, the targeting penalty going against him. Five tackles to lead the way for the Rams. Antonio Fox with four, Duckworth with four, and Clayton Batten who had a pick six on a 32-yard interception return. He also has four tackles. We look at things on the Kutztown side of, thing, uh, of the ball, and uh, they've struggled to get that running game going, which – as we know, is kind of their strength. 21 carries with just 75 yards leading the way for them. Daryl Davis McNeil with two carries for 30 yards, had a 29-yard run. Z Zaire Jones had a 14-yard run, but everything else has been pretty much stacked up by this Rams defense. Jordan Davis, five carries, 12 yards. Jeremiah Nelson, three carries for just 11 yards. And then Eric Nickel, he has been lost for what we presume the game with an injury, 7 of 10 passing, 71 yards. Donnie Blaine having to come in for him. He goes 3 of 9, throws that pick 6 on his first pass at that 38 yards and a touchdown. So, uh, Kutztown definitely, you know, down 14 at this point. If they can get a stop defensively, they can kind of stay in their game plan. But if they go down 28 to 7, uh, it's going to be very tough for Kutztown to mount a comeback against the Shepherd team. And like you mentioned, that stop's going to be critical because right now they can still run the football with the score the way it is now, and they can have reason to have some optimism as far as running the ball. Like you said, Shell's going to be out here in the second half. Chris Lane is a bit dinged up. <coughs> Excuse me, Chris Lane's a bit dinged up, so you're not sure if he's going to be stiffening up a little bit, sitting down during halftime. So there could be two linebackers out of that Rams defensive rotation, so maybe that could possibly open up some things as far as the running game is concerned. So, like you said, there's going to be a lot riding on this possession as far as that Golden Bears defense able to stop the Rams' offense and try to deny them any type of points on this drive. But you already know this is an aggressive Rams offensive unit, so they're going for the jugular right here on this first possession of the second half. The leading receivers for Kutztown here at the after room. Cap with three catches for 33 yards. Jake Novak scored the touchdown on three catches, 22 yards in the first half. Jordan Davis, two catches, 30 yards. Derek Anderson, one catch, 
for 21 yards. And then the leading tacklers for the Golden Bears, Amani Justice with six tackles. Sean Tubro Ortiz has four tackles and an interception. Chris Thomas, three tackles. Justin Harris with three tackles as well. The Rams will receive this second half kickoff. And we will get going again here for Andre Reed Stadium in this Region 1 championship game between Kutztown and Shepard. The winner will head to the semifinals where we'll see a reseeding between the four remaining teams, and that will decide locations and all of that. And the winner of that game will, of course, go to the NCAA Division II championship playing in McKinney, Texas. As that kickoff will go into the end zone for a touchback, and the Rams will take over. First down and 10 from the 25. As we get ready for the second half, Tyson Bajan and the Rams offense back onto the field. And what is, you know, what we've already noted is a pretty important drive for both these teams. The Rams offense, no reason to try to force it. They've had success taking what the defense is giving them. And something that this Rams offense has had a little bit more, actually a lot more success with, is getting run after the catch. They've been doing a good job of settling down in the soft spots in the zone and picking up some extra yards after the catch. And that's something that they've really been excellent at throughout the year. Start the ball, start the second half off getting the ball to Rodney Brown. Step in the right direction. Wary and... Amante Armani Justice in on that tackle after a solid pickup there of six yards for Ronnie Brown. Armani Justice, that's a name that we thought we were going to be saying a lot today. Haven't called his number too many times. The Rams have game planned and kind of phased him out a little bit. Second and four. Dump down to Ryan Beach in space. Beach has speed, gets to the edge. Beach across the 40. Has the first down. Going to be pushed out at the 42. To number nine. You can tell, nothing fancy for this Rams offense. They're getting the ball to their money players. Ronnie Brown gets a run on first down. You throw a bubble to Ryan Beach on second down. I think you rinse and repeat, and you ride that pattern all the way down the field. Seems like a good pattern for success for this Shepard offense. As there is the run with Ronnie Brown. This time, though, Amani Justice is having, or I'm sorry, Wary, that is, coming up and making that tackle, having none of that. After a short two-yard pickup, will be second down and eight. And Wary, 6'2", 220-pound redshirt junior. He has 69 tackles coming into today's contest, 34 of those solo. And he's also a player that can get in the backfield and make some things happen. 13 and a half tackles for loss, including four and a half sacks. So Shepard sending McCook and Wetzel in motion from right to left here on second down and eight. Bajan. Dumps it down the flat to a wide open Michael McCook. He gets close to the midfield line before being brought down quickly there on that far side. Seems like the, go ahead, Trevor. It seems like this Rams offense almost operating off of a script here in the second half, much like they did in the first half of that first drive. Is just we're going to get the ball to our key guys and just pick up chunks and not be greedy. Just take what the defense can give you. Third down and four, this Kutztown crowd coming to its feet. Bajan slings it over the middle, complete to Ryan Beach. He gets Ooh. met hard, but has the first down, then another big hit to clean that one up by Harris. I'm sorry, Ryan Jennings that was to come up. Justin Harris, I believe, made the initial hit, and then Jennings coming up and flying in there. But it is a first down for Shepard. And Beach able to take that hit and, and get off the field he with no issues. Hit two big hits on that play. Man, oh, man. Bit generous on the forward progress, but I'm sure the Rams will take that first down. I think he had it either way, even with the knockback, as they'll take a deep shot for Jonathan Moss and just threw his hands and incomplete. Good coverage by Lloyd on the route. Jonathan Moss. He'll be second down attack. Lloyd, just such good ball instincts, great on the ball defender. Something that you might not expect from a corner that listed at 5'8", 165 pounds. But the redshirt junior certainly plays a lot bigger than that and just has tremendous instincts in playing the ball. Ronnie Brown remains in the backfield here on second down at 10 from the 47-yard line. 
Brown to the right of Bajant. High snap play action. Bajant steps up in the pocket under some pressure and gets away from the defenders. They will slide forward. Justice coming up and making that tackle. Gain of five yards on the play. And that's the right read that time by Tyson Bajant. You fake the zone across to Ronnie Brown. You roll outside. You see that the defense is playing off on the pass. You pull it down and run it again. What that's going to do is going to help set you up later on in the game because now that defender is going to have to account for you running the ball. Maybe that pulls somebody down and opens up something over the top for your wide receiver in your passing game. Third down and five from the 42. Bajant looking to throw. Has time. Crowd wants a hold and they'll get it. They'll dump it down to Ronnie Brown. He has the first down before being pushed out of bounds, but that flag is going to take that away. Looks like maybe it's Joey Fisher there on the edge. Yes, it was Fisher. Fisher, part of that all region team, second teamer, along with Eric Ostro, both of those guys making it. They just had just an excellent season. They just have specialized in neutralizing the team's premier pass rushers. They've really done a good job of that all year long. You, you go into the game, you see some of the talented defenders that they have to face up front, and then they get into the game, and you don't hear their name until until the end of the game when you're wondering what happened to them. Yeah, unless they get a holding, which doesn't really happen very often. Those guys have been good up front all season for the Rams, but a holding penalty backs up Shepard to third down and 15 from their own 48-yard line. Bajant rolling out to the right again, looking deep down the field. Good coverage by Kutztown. Now Bajant will throw on the run incomplete, just throwing it away, pass intended for Ryan Beach. It'll be fourth down, so a pretty significant penalty there because Shepard had the first down, but then that was taken away, and now they'll be forced to punt. And Kutztown gets that stop that they needed to start the second half. And most times, you know, that, I mean, that's going to knock off most offenses as far as, like, their, their scheduling when you get a big penalty like that. Like, holding penalties are huge. It backs you up 10 yards. But Shepard has been able to overcome that for the most part this season. But when you're going against, going against a – top-notch defense like the Golden Bears. They, they, they kind of make you regular where you're not able to overcome big deficits like that. Barrick sends an end-over-end end kick. Flag on the player. Call, not fair caught, I guess, because Shepard comes up and hits him. But uh, there is a flag here. Got down by number 87, Brian Walker. It looks like in the area of possibly a holding. It's going to go against Shepard based on the officials' conversation at the Kutztown coaching staff. We really didn't get great field position, so they'll try the punt again. See if that can backs them up five yards. Plus, they also have to kick into the wind. Yep. Let's see if that helps out. McElroy here on this return. He'll be back deep for the Golden Bears. Two players back there as Ryan Bear kicks this one away. High kick, and it seems like he got caught in that wind a little bit. We'll bounce it around the 30-yard line. So set up a little bit better field position for the Golden Bears here as they'll have first down at 10. Out of bounds. The from the 27-yard line. line. 11-18 to go in this third quarter. Shepard 21, puts down seven. Puts down able to score about 28 seconds to go in this first half. Donnie, or in the first half, Donnie Blaine connecting with Novak for the touchdown. And Blaine back on the field and so you wonder he settles in, yeah. could be uh, you know, a good game out of it. And you wonder if Nickel, if, if it was something where it was uh, one particular play that kind of knocked him out, or was it just something where it was this uh, accumulation of punishment? He took a few big hits. As, here's a big run for Jordan Davis. Spin move at around the 35. Davis out toward midfield. A big run for him before he's finally thrown down by Kendall Duckworth. 
Davis coming off to the side. Like he's kind of grabbing at his hip a little bit. He is certainly yeah. electric when he gets the ball in his hands, but hard to keep him on the field. And that's, that's obviously an issue. I mean, he's probably went on the field, Kutztown's most explosive offensive weapon. But when they don't have him, he can't really help you that much. Davis McNeil now in the backfield. He had a big run that first half, and he gets a solid pickup here, taking it into Shepard territory. Frank and Frankie Stevens in on that tackle for the Rams. Davis on the sideline getting checked out by the trainer. Looked like they're focusing on that left rib area right above the hip. Four-yard pickup on that first run by Davis McNeil as we have ten and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. Cuts down moving the ball to the Shepard 48-yard line. Blaine in the pistol. Two receiver set. Second down. High snap. Blaine play action. Rolling to his weak side. Throws behind the intended receiver, Derek Anderson, and incomplete. Blaine's pass is incomplete. Intended for Good defense on the back Anderson. end that time by Clayton Batten. You could tell. That McNeil wanted to go deep with that one. And now Cap looked like he's cramping up a little bit as he comes back. That's the thing. In this cooler weather, players sometimes are reluctant to drink water the way they normally would if it was a hot game. But you're still sweating. You're still exerting yourself. And that cold weather is going to make those muscles tighten up. So cramping still a factor, even when the weather's a little bit cooler. Third down at six. Blaine with four wide receivers, two to each side. Throws quickly complete to Anderson for the first down. This is complete to number 83, Derek Anderson. He is down at the 39 yard line. Eight of nine, first and ten for the Good Bears. throw by Donnie Blaine. It, it seems like he's starting to maybe find it a little bit or at least get more comfortable as this game goes on. You know, when you're not expected to start and to be thrown into the middle of a ball game and – while you take those reps all week mentally, you know, backup quarterbacks don't get starting reps at, at college and the NFL, so it's tough for those guys to just come in and, and have to play. It, it's tough to prepare and simulate that kind of speed. First down and ten. Quick throw out of the backfield of Derek Anderson again, and Anderson gets it down to about the 33-yard line. And, and they're also running plays now for Blaine where he can be comfortable, you know, easy completions like that to Anderson that work out well for him. And you see they motioned the tight end over that time. The wide receiver was on the ball, so the tight end was covered up. So what that means is that they just want an extra blocker. So they're doing things as far as protection. That's going to give him a little bit of extra time. The easy throws, getting him into a rhythm. That was a pass that he attempted earlier in the game. Not able to connect. We can tell the game's starting to slow down for him as he gets a little bit more confidence and gets more into a rhythm with his wide receivers. Seven-yard pickup, second down and three from the Shepard 32. Blaine takes the snap, play action, looking deep for Anderson again, but it's over his head and incomplete. Blaine's pass is incomplete. He just he had to have lost it in the sun yeah. because the ball looked like it was on target. That time Cap doing a good job of taking the top off of the defense Opening things up for his wide receiver buddy, but not able to connect on all. And that's just opportunities that you can't afford to miss. Derek Anderson, and the angle he's looking back, looked like he's direct, looking directly back into the sun and just lost track of the ball. But that was good protection and a good throw by the quarterback, just not able to connect with his wide receiver. So third and three now from the 32. Blaine takes the snap. They'll run up the middle, and that is stuffed. Kyle Smith there at the bottom of the pile getting around the ankles. Davis McNeil, tough run there and no gain on the play. Fourth down and three. I think Kutztown will go for it here in this situation. For this high snaps too, throwing off timing, especially on run plays like that where you're trying to get something up the middle. That extra second it might take to get that ball down could allow a uh, defender to get off a block and make that tackle. So fourth down and three here from the 32. Another high snap and did not get there. Stuffed was Daryl Davis McLean McNeil again. And it's a turnover on down. And another thing that the high snap does, it makes the quarterback take his eyes off of the secondary. 
because he has to look up to catch the ball, and that's that one second where he has to try to settle himself, try to figure out where those defensive players have moved around. So, I mean, it, it throws off a lot of things, and especially if you want to have a quick hitting running play, it just slows it down that half a beat, and that's one thing you don't want to do is give that Rams defense a jump on the running game. It's, it's very interesting that Kutztown has had this issue since week four and has only lost one game. And we know they've had this issue because they had it in the first time they played Shepard. I don't know if it's just the Shepard defense provides that problem as Ty Hebron gets a nice run here out to about the 36. Or if it's just been an issue and they've been able to overcome it somehow all season. But like high snaps, you'd think they'd find somebody else to go to or something. But yeah, and, 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 maybe, and maybe that's one of the things that leads to their limited offensive output yeah. throughout the course of the season where they a, a good football team like this really hasn't blown anybody out. They've just been able to edge teams out throughout the year, so maybe that's something that's kind of thrown them off track throughout the course of the year. Seven and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. Hebron running left. Cuts it up the field, finds some room. Number nine, Imani Justice. To the 37-yard line. Be third down. Justice again on that tackle along with Wolf. 21 7, Shepard on top in this quickly moving third quarter. Third down in about three. Page in the shotgun formation, three wide receiver set. Brown is the back to the right of Agent. They'll run Brown. He stutter steps and finds the first down. A great run Number and great three, patience Ronnie by Ronnie Brown to wait for that Number hole to five, open up and then seven, find eight, it eight, and eight. get the first down. Six, running six, behind six, the big center, the Frank Brett Bernay clearing the way. And like you mentioned, just a patient run. That time by the running back. And you just tell he's just getting more and more comfortable. And, that, and that's just the next level stuff where running back is setting up your blocks. And that was something Ronnie Brown was able to do on that play. First and 10 from the 43 now. Bajit takes the high snap, rolling out to the right, looking downfield and completing to Ryan Beach. Beach coming back to the near side. Has the first down to the 44-yard line. You could tell Bajan, <coughs> excuse me, a little frustrated on that play because that was a high snap. And I think that kind of threw off the play fake. That's a play that Shepard has used throughout the season where they play fake the running back away. Then Bajan rolls out to his right, and usually you get Beach on that wheel route up the sidelines. And that high snap kind of threw off the timing of the play. He had to settle for the check down. With Beach on the sidelines, we're basically working a comeback. All right. Mer Patient throwing here. Complete to Ryan Beach behind the line of scrimmage, and he gets the game about one. I was going to say there, Marette Bernay, he is a fill-in center for Shepard. Adam Stilley was the center early in the season, but he went down with an injury, and really we haven't seen much of a drop-off from 54. He's done a nice job filling in. Uh, again, a, a couple of high snaps in this ball game, but for the most part, he's been really good, and you haven't noticed it. And that's something that certainly has helped Shepard because while they love what they get out of Stilly when he's active, uh, to have the backup come in and, and not have a big drop-off has been big for this Rams team, second down and nine. It's just a testament to that Rams coaching staff, the way they're able to. Ooh. Ooh. Ryan Beach gets clocked. Lloyd laying the boom here at the 40-yard line. But Beach, again, he's tough. I mean, he gets right back up like nothing happened. Incomplete pass, so it will be third down here in about nine. That's a textbook tackle. He put his shoulder right in his guts, and the ball popped out. I'll tell you what, Anton Lloyd is probably the best corner that we've seen so far this year. Like he, he, his presence looms large when he's out there on the field. He's a stud. He makes plays in both defense and special teams. Bajan under pressure, avoiding, looking downfield, and now sacked at midfield. Coming up and making the play was Nigel Wilson. It'll be fourth down. Bajan trying to make something, trying to make something happen. I'll tell you what, Anton Lloyd, 
this team feeds off of him. He's certainly a leader out there on the field. He lays the boom on Ryan Beach. The next play, Golden Bears defense able to get some pressure on the quarterback. And that was a much-needed stop that's going to keep Cutstown into this game. But they're going to have to do something with the ball on offense to try to whittle away at this lead. Cutstown with two big start stops to start the second half. And this time, McElroy is going to get the fair catch <laughs> interference. So that's a big there we go. penalty. <laughs> you know sometimes how punters got to sell the penalty sometimes when they get hit. Sometimes the punt returner's got to do the same. McElroy going for the Academy Award on that one. And, and it was something earlier in the game that they thought that they should have got the penalty, but that yeah. time I think he was able to successfully draw the penalty. Right now the referee's over there talking, but I don't know what they could possibly be discussing. Maybe just making certain there was a fair catch single. Now they're just piling up the penalty flags right there. They threw another one there. <laughs> hey, I saw that too. Let me throw one mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why they threw this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 21 7 our score. That will set up cuts down nicely, at least for field position to the 36 yard line. And a penalty was something that jump started their lone touchdown drive of the game. So, see if they could try to duplicate that success with this offensive possession. Yeah, the Golden Bears need it to get going offensively. Now they're going to go under center. Jeremiah Nelson, the running back. Donnie Blaine under center in the split back formation. He'll hand off to Nelson. Big hole for him. Into the secondary as the first down out toward midfield. And maybe that could be something to help Kutz down a little bit because they've had these snapping issues and we can't get a high snap on an under center situation. So I don't know how many plays they have out of that offense. So You see Chris Lane checks himself out of the game again. Shell's already out, so you know the Rams, even though with that depth, there is going to be a drop off when you have yeah. to start working in some of those backups. So you put them under center, not only that, it allows your running game. It's more downhill. It's more physical, and it kind of hides the fact that your center's snaps are getting a little bit high. And Shepard is in a nickel formation, just two linebackers out there for them. So they'll go and go under center, but good job by the Rams' yeah, defensive Davis, line Davis, to keep that one contained. Malik Holloway making that Holloway. tackle. Gain of two in the Shepard territory at the 49. It's second and eight. 3.30 to go in this third quarter. 21-7 Shepard on top. Ball now on the 49-yard line. Donnie Blaine in the shotgun formation. Jordan Davis back in the ball game, lining up to the left of Blaine. It's a four-receiver set. Three to the far side, one to the near. That's Derek Anderson. They've liked his matchups today. See if they maybe take a shot here on second down and eight. They'll run Davis to the outside. He's able to get to that edge. Davis across the 40 and has the first down. Pushed out at about the 37. Kendall Duckworth running him down. Malik Halloway trying to lobby with the officials. They should have got the holding penalty that time. He was matched up against Lo Luke Lozawicki. Lozawicki did have a holding in that first half. So, but he was he was a big guy blocking a little guy the first time. This time he was a big guy blocking a big guy, so that's a little bit easier to disguise it. Yeah. First down and ten from the 37, but also a play on the edge, so could have been called there. But Donnie Blaine throwing tight window and nearly intercepted. Making a nice play on that football was Keyshawn Hall Haley. You could tell McElroy on the other side of the field. You could tell he, he, he wanted that ball on that one. I, I, I think Blaine looked to the wrong side of the field because he had two wide receivers that were open to that far sideline. And tried to throw that needle to Derek Anderson, who did get a little bit of separation, but was a very tight window to try to get that ball in there on. So second down and 10 from the 37. Davis the back to the left of Blaine. They'll run Davis off the right side. Another big hole for Jordan Davis, and he has the first down again. Frankie Stevens, you got to wrap up. You had a chance to stop him short of the first down. You just try to throw a shoulder into him. You can't do that. He's too good of a running back to think that you're just going to knock him down with a, with a forearm shiver. You're going to have to wrap up and drive him to the turf. 
He's a top-notch running back. Even with his size at five foot eight, 175, he still finds a way to run hard and run some guys over even occasionally as it will be a first down and 10 from the 27-yard line of Shepard. Blaine will hand to Davis again. Big hole. Davis down inside the 20 to about the 19. Baxter making the tackle. You have a defensive lineman making a tackle that far downfield. Usually not a good thing. All right, Davis coming off to the side again. Again, holding his midsection. Not too often you see running backs with rib protectors, but he has a rib protector on and seems to be favoring it. Zaire Jones checks into the game. That was a gorgeous run that time by Davis. A bucket step, almost making it a delay, kind of a draw type of action, allowing his offensive line to get out in front. And after that, he was able to turn on the Jets and pick up a first down for the, well, get a big chunk on first down for this Golden Bears offense. Second and two. And that will be the first down after Jones gets it. Zaire Jones, the junior running back, who we saw him run hard in this first matchup between these two teams and cuts down with this long drive, taking a lot of time off in this third quarter. We're down to about a minute 13 to go in the third, and, and there's still plenty of time if the Golden Bears can get into the end zone. That would make it a one sewer game, and cuts down is content to run that football. That's why the defense has been so important because – that's allowed cuts down to keep running instead of being forced to throw. And that was something that, that Kutztown was able to do that really caught the Rams off guard in their first game is that they were able to stick to their guns. They were able to stick to their original game plan. They did not blink, and that allowed them to play their style of football, and it kept them in the game, and it put them in the lead when they were able to get a couple breaks to go their way. So now with the backup quarterback in, they're able to do that. That's a huge benefit, and it goes to show the type of resilience for this Kutztown football team. Jones cuts it back. Toward the middle of the field, Jawan Addison making the tackle. Jawan Addison makes the stop. Second and seven at the 12. Three yard pickup. It's second down at seven for the Golden Bears from the 12 yard line. Blaine in the shotgun formation. Blaine takes the high snap, looked a little bit confused, but now he's got Rudy outside. He'll go in untouched for the Kutztown Golden Bear touchdown. <laughs> and half the Rams defense is asking for a holding call on that. A good play fake by the young quarterback. They bite on it. They've been able to establish the run on this drive, and the speedy quarterback was able to get off of the edge, and he had a convoy of blockers out in front. They wanted to get a holding call on the edge, but that time, but nothing doing. And this Golden Bears... Football team showing that they got a ton of resilience and that they deserve to be in this football game. They got a good football team too, and they're battling back, trying to pull off something special here in front of their home crowd. Coppolino on to attempt the point after his kick is up and good. So we got a ball game here with 12 seconds to go in this third quarter. 21-14, Shepard still on top, but the Golden Bears making it close. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube back to now an electric Andre Reed Stadium after Donnie Blaine finds the end zone and cuts this lead down to seven with 12 seconds to go in this third quarter at 21-14. Nick Verzeline, Travis Smith here in Kutztown, Pennsylvania for this ball game. Golden Bears fans getting into it and Kutztown right back into the ball game after going down 21-0 have rallied back to make it 21-14. Lewis will watch that ball go over his head and roll into the back of the end zone for a touchback. Shepard back on the field offensively from their own 25-yard line. And the defense for Kutztown with two big stops so far in the second half, Travis and Shepard offense, again, for whatever reason, seems to struggle against this Golden Bear defense. And maybe it's just they're really good. I mean, they're top 10 on the season or in scoring for a reason. Styles make fights. <laughs> and that Golden Bears defense, the way that they play defense, just matches up very well to what the Rams like to do on offense. You can almost say that that Golden Bears defense was built to face this Rams offense. And, and it's showing here today that the Rams have been tough to pick up plays here and there. And that's going to be a negative play to begin this drive and end this third quarter coming up and making that hit Justin Harris. 
on Josh Gontarek. That's the final play of the third quarter. We'll take a 60 second break. 21 7 Shepard, or 21 14 Shepard, our score as we head to this fourth quarter. At Andre Reid Stadium, we got in ourselves a good ball game between these two teams. This is Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10 and WRR TV on YouTube. Dear college sports, there's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for the college, college sports. sports. College sports fans, get ready for game day with officially licensed merchandise from the NCAA official online shop, ncaa.com slash shop. Get the whole family geared up with the best collection of apparel and accessories, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, headwear, championship gear, and more. Visit the NCAA shop for today's special offer and rep your favorite team now. Only at ncaa.com slash shop. Hand, or takes the snap and get, hands it off, and not any room again for Hebron. And it seems like maybe it's the way Cut sounds lining up defensively, but Shepard's been a little bit conservative in the second half for whatever reason. We don't. It's, see it's these something kind that of plays. it's something that they're seeing where they're not liking the matchups. They're, they're, they're not liking what the defense is doing to them, so they're just like, you know, they're, they're, they're not trying to challenge it. That's the one of the strange things that kind of pro cropped up in the first game, but they really don't seem to be challenging cuts down the way they go after other teams. Bajan under pressure again, throws to the near side complete, but it's going to be short of the first down. Golden Bears flying to the football, and once again, it's Lloyd making the tackle and fourth down, and... You know, also this Kutztown crowd is really into it. And what appears to be close to a capacity crowd, pretty much every seat full. And then a good bit of people in kind of a standing room section. And, and you mentioned around it. the stadium as well. This crowd was largely quiet for most of yeah. this game because Shepard was able to dominate the action early on. But a couple big plays by this Golden Bears ball club. And now this home crowd is getting into it. The band's getting into it. And it's a totally different dynamic down there on the football field. But it's just the style of defense that the Golden Bears are able to play. It's just it, – it, that's the surprising thing is that the Rams really haven't tried to challenge that. They play that too high safety. They try to keep everything in front of them. They do a good job of rallying to the football early on. Shepard had success finding those open spots in the, in, in the zone, running after the catch. But so far, those gaps have gotten tighter and tighter. The defense has just been like a boa constrictor. Every time that Rams offense exhales, they just get a little bit tighter. And a bad punt from Ryan Barrick will go out around midfield. So Kutztown with excellent field possession and the momentum on their side. All of a sudden, uh, update here from the state championship, not necessarily because of the score, because I think everybody knows Martinsburg is going to win that one at 62-21. But Hudson Clement has eight touchdowns in that state championship game for Martinsburg with about 2.26 to go in that third quarter. So uh, this is going to be even better field position than what I initially thought for Kutztown, but that is a great performance. I knew Hudson Clement was a stud, but, man, he is – balled out in the state championship against number one Huntington. First and 10 from the 42 here for Kutztown. Rams a little bit on the ropes, leading by seven, but the Golden Bears have made it interesting. Donnie Blaine takes that high snap, run up the middle for a gain of about one, maybe two. I know it's your offense to work out of the pistol or work out of the shotgun, but they had a lot of success running the ball when the quarterback was under center. It doesn't throw off the timing, and you can attack where the Rams are a little bit thin right now. They're, they're having some difficulties as far as finding somebody in that linebacking core. Shell disqualified earlier in the game. Chris Lane's banged up. He's on the sideline. You know that leader wants to be out there with his fellow Warriors, but he can't go right now. So you got Duckworth, you have Frankie Stevens, and the Golden Bears on that last touchdown drive really attacked that linebacking core with great success. One-yard pickup on the run, second down and nine from the 41. 
Baxter in the backfield, swallowing up. Nelson, gets the carry. Nelson on that Number carry. Jack Roll under 13 minutes to go in this ball game. 21-14 Shepard. The Rams defense looking to respond. Third and long. See if those pass rushers can make something happen on the edge and see if this young quarterback can rise to the occasion and pick up a crucial first down for Cutstown. And that road crowd trying to get into it as much as they can here with about 12.20 to go. Facing a crucial third down and eight for the Golden Bears. I think they might be in four down territory here if you want to match that Shepard aggressiveness and trust in your defense. Here's a deep ball down the sideline, caught inside the 15 yard line. It's Derek Anderson. A little bit of an underthrown ball, but Anderson beat the corner on the outside and it didn't really matter and it was a well-placed football by Donnie Blaine. Tyron McDade, I'm not sure what was going on, whether it was a miscommunication with the safety that maybe he thought that McDade maybe thought he had safety help over the top. But if I'm betting with the type of safeties that Shepard has, I'm betting that the safeties didn't make the mistake. It was just McDade stumbled on the coverage. Derek Anderson is a bigger wide receiver, so he can get physical and create his own space if he has to. First and 10 from the 12-yard line. Donnie Blaine and the Golden Bears will be forced to take a timeout here. We'll subside for a 30-second break, but, man, Kutztown trying to tie this thing up here in this fourth quarter. 21-14 our score. We're back in 30. Man, oh, man, what the hell was McVay doing back there? He's actually been, you know, really good. <laughs> like he's a solid like, of, of the corners that's on the team. Like he's solid. You look at his numbers and you kind of forget that he's making plays. Yeah. Like he has 10 pass breakups, I think it was, yeah. and uh, three interceptions now. Twenty-one fourteen, Shepard leading cuts down here on the road, but the Golden Bears have gotten it down to the Rams' 12-yard line here in this fourth quarter of 11.38 to go. Donnie Blaine in the shotgun formation. Two receivers to the near side. And Davis McNeil in the backfield. They'll give it to Davis McNeil. He stutter steps, running to the outside, running hard inside the 10-yard line, down to about the five before finally being brought down. I think Baxter hit on that tackle again. And I mean, like we've seen arm all these tackle, running backs. Yeah, arm tackles at the point of attack. That's not going to get it done. Especially against big physical guys like Davis McNeil, who's 5'11", 200 pounds, and, and runs hard. Lane in the shotgun again, stacked receivers to the far side. They'll go Davis McNeil. He lunges toward the end zone. He's going to be short. About as close as you can get without scoring. Fought for a second. He's but it looks get like the ball across. But, but it was enough to pick down. up a first down. Yeah. So they get a fresh set of downs. And they're going right at where they're thin. They're lined up quickly. They're looking to try to punch one in. Blaine under center. Davis McNeil in the backfield. Blaine sneaks. I think he got there, but no. He didn't. They're marking him a yard short. Thought that lunge was going to get Donnie Blaine. He tried to line up quickly. It's literally like a half yard between Kutztown and a tied ball game, presuming they make the extra point. Blaine again sneaks, and I think that extra push got him into the end zone. Touchdown, Golden Bears. 21-20 with the extra point pending. Cuts down, 21 unanswered. Well, excuse me, 20 unanswered with a chance to tie the ball game up with this extra point. On that first quarterback sneak attempt, I think it kind of did him a disservice in having the first down because the referees had to spot the ball, slow it down, so they weren't able to really catch him off guard, but they come right back to the same play. On second down, they're able to punch it in. This Golden Bears team coming back to life. Extra points good. So we have a tie ball game with 10.30 to go in this fourth quarter. Shepard offense coming back on the field. We'll take a 30-second break. Dear College Sports. 
There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college sports. sports. Welcome you back to Andre Reed Stadium. 21-21 now our score at 10.30 to go in this fourth quarter. The Rams will get the football back. They're going to send Ronnie Brown and St. Louis Bank deep. The Rams need a spark. Offensively, we talked about they've really had one long drive resulting in points. They do have another offensive touchdown, but that drive started from the 20-yard line after the Chris Lane fumble recovery. And then the other touchdown for Shepard was a pick six. So essentially, Kutztown has kind of held Shepard to only seven points, or at least seven points on an actual long drive, not with a short field. As this one fielded by the up man, it could be dangerous for Shepard as they're going to get great field position. Fisher on the return. That was kind of a traffic jam when the ball came down, so it could have been dangerous. Absolutely, but he's, he's looking to make a play for his team and was able to come away with success on that, setting up the offense with pretty good field position. You talk about needing a spark on offense. You got Ronnie Brown out there. You got Ryan Beach. If you need a spark, you got two electric players right there that can provide it. And Gonteric out there as well to the near side. Moss to the far side. Wetzel in the slot at tight end to this near side as well on first and 10 for the 42. Bajan will go Ronnie Brown running. Stopped initially. Ronnie Brown still fighting and now brought down. Good tackle there on the play. Finally, Cam Wolf cleaning that one up. So Turbo Ortiz also coming in, cleaning it up. He's breaking tackles, but I'll tell you what, they are rallying to the football. It's not just one guy trying to make the tackle in space. It's 11 hats to the football, and it has been successful for this Golden Bears defense. It's weird, too, because Shepard running it on first down like isn't a guarantee, but it seems like in this game that it's almost been a guarantee. There's been a ton of runs early on first and second down. Bajan now with all day to throw. Fires to the far side complete, leaping up and making the catch on that far side. Gonteric. Gonteric. Gonteric working against Harris. I know he's been a frequent target of this Rams offense, but he is hung tough. And you certainly don't want to tempt fate too much by going after Lloyd, because he has certainly proven up to the challenge in the two contests so far. Cuts down with 21 unanswered points. After Shepard had 21 unanswered to begin this ball game, Donnie Blaine helping lead this comeback after the injury to Eric Nickel. Bajan play action. Dumps it down underneath. Good tackle there on Brian Walker. There's Justice. He's had a nice second half. He had six tackles at halftime, but it didn't feel like he was involved in a lot of big plays. But Justice here in the second half. Really asserting making, himself. Yeah, yeah, making a lot of... Nice plays over the middle in space and coming up big for this team. Just a one-yard pickup there, second down and nine for the Rams. Rams trying to go play action on first down. You can tell Bajan wanted to go downfield, but again, that cuts down defense, does a good job of playing too high. They are not bringing that safety down in the box. And a flag here. I think this is going to be a false legal start. formation or false start, yeah. It's going to go against Ryan Beach. 8.36 to go. We have a 21-21 ball game. Not too often you've seen this Rams offense get out of rhythm, but they're certainly out of rhythm. And again, they've had a tough time once they get behind the chains to try to make it up versus a very stingy defense. Second and 14 after the penalty from the 50-yard line. Bajan. Throws over the middle, complete to a weeping, leaping Alex Let Wetzel for the first down. 
And again, Ronnie Brown making his impact felt without having to get the ball in his hands. He runs that shallow drag route across the middle, making those linebackers step up just the slightest bit. And that was enough for Wetzel to get in behind him and make a big catch on that play. The Rams needed that one. Good, patient throw that time by Tyson Patient. Excellent protection up front by that Rams offensive line. First and 10 from the 30, Ron Brown gets the carry, gets stuffed initially, and then fights yeah, pushing forward. Pushing the pile forward. And he should pick up a pretty solid run here. After it looked like initially he was going to be stuffed, but they're, they're only going to give him a yard. They're not going to give him that extra effort. Kind of interesting. I didn't hear a whistle, but maybe the whistle was blown down on the field. It is obviously hard to hear here at Andre Reed Stadium with the Golden Bears crowd back in this ball game. Pageant in the offense driving those second down and nine from the 30. Pageant steps up under pressure, dumps it down in the flat to an open Ryan Beach. Trying to fight forward for positive yardage. Gets down to the 24. Wari brought down. Wari <laughs> comes up and whacks him one good time and takes him down to the turf. Third down and three. From the 24-yard line. Bajan in the offense. Adjusting at the line of scrimmage. Gonteric and Moss. To the near side, Beach to the far, Brown the back. Beach now moving in motion from right to left. Bajant takes the snap, looking to throw. Dumps it down to Gonteri. Puts down, flies to the football. I think he's going to be about a yard short. That time the Shepard offense reaching deep into their bag of tricks. Looking like a running back screen to the right side, then coming back to a smoke screen to Gonteri where the three wide receivers were lined up, and that cuts down defense. Sniffed it out the entire time, flew up to the ball. Big fourth down for this Rams offense. Fourth and two. 6-18 remaining with Kutztown's ability to run the ball. You might not get it back. You never know. So this is a huge play. Ronnie Brown gets the carry. Brown fighting for the first down. I think he gets it. He gets it. That was a good spot, good run. Did a good job of riding his blockers in front. Number 66, Ryan Myers. And they will give him the first down. So a big run by Ronnie. Let's go, defense! Shepard now with the ball at the 21-yard line. First and 10 as we approach six minutes to go in this ball game. That was a good discipline run that time by Ronnie Brown, not messing around, yeah, not trying to go to for the home much. run, You're not trying to do too much. Just move the sticks. Ride those big offensive linemen, move the sticks. Agent dumps it down in the flat, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Michael McCook. You Second can, and ten. You can tell the way Cutstown is playing defense. Shepard has had a lot of success running that play throughout the year where the quarterback does that zone read, fake across his face, then rolling outside in a show like it's going to be some type of out to the sideline, and that wide receiver turns up, but the pressure is so hard into the quarterback's face he's having to throw the check down and that time the pass comes up a little bit short and again second and ten for this rams offense agent handing off hebron spinning in the hole and dragging defenders it looked like it wasn't going to be much of a run coming up and making that tackle cam wolf six yards on the play third and four to 15. so hebron able to find six make it third down and four we talked about I guess kind of the cuts down defensive strategy, especially in that first game where they were kind of content to keep plays in front of them. But I think there's been a difference in strategy this game. It seems like cuts down is very aggressive in the pursuit of the football and, and being more physical than maybe in game one. Third and four from the 15. Maybe something that they saw in that Millersville tape. Very similar game plan that Millersville used against the Shepard Rams offense. Play action, Wetzel catches it right at the sticks. Coming up and making that tackle is Nick Palmer. And it's another first down. Just enough to Alex Wetzel there to make it first and 10 from the 11. All right, so referee's giving the signal to the chain gang to move on down, it's a first down. 
It 4.44 like was, to go. It looked like he was going to have a little bit more room to run with the ball after that, but the way that secondary closed, it was a hard shot on Wetzel. Beach goes in motion. They'll run Hebron. Hebron inside the five. There's a stiff arm and a flag coming in. I think this is going to be holding against the Rams. There's Ronnie Brown on the carry. Faking that jet sweep to beat, you have to respect that with his, his speed and his ability to make things happen with the ball. And it was just enough to open up the lane. That's tough. You got those offensive linemen on the edge. They're not able to, to hide among the traffic and use those hands the way they'd like to. And sometimes that's going to get you some holding penalties on the edge. And that one going against, I believe, Cole Weaver. So that will First and 16 for the back Rams. it up, but only to the 16 because of where the penalty occurred. So not too often that this Rams offense. 17. Yeah, not too often that this Rams offense has to play from behind the chains, but they've been in this spot several times today. Bajan pump fakes throws Enzo just off the hand of Josh Gonteric and incomplete. And, and there was pressure up front. Bajan wasn't able to get off a clean throw. It looked like his arm may have been hit that time. And now Gonteric down in that back of the end zone as he had to really extend. It's tough to make a play like that, so we'll have the injury timeout. And it looks like, too, they're going to stretch him out, so probably just cramp, but we got 4.17 to go in this ballgame. The second half has been all Cutstown after Shepard pretty much dominated the first half. B built itself a nice 21-0 lead, but Cutstown able to score right before halftime. As Gontera gets a nice cheer as he'll limp off here. But Cutstown was able to score right before halftime, kind of get back into the game, and the defense has made some crucial stops to begin this second half. But here with 4.17 remaining in the ball game, the Rams are in the red zone at the 17-yard line, are faced with a second down at 16. So can you get a first down without getting a touchdown? But it's second and 16 from the 17. Bajan in the shotgun. He'll take the snap, look the throw. Dumps it down underneath. Ryan Beach makes the catch. But it's tackled quickly. Good job by the episode to make that tackle. Just a two-yard pickup. Third down and 14. Well, it's kind of gate of one. I'm saying not too often Ryan Beach gets caught from behind, but it just shows a caliber athlete. That cuts down is able to match up with Shepard man for man. Moss and Greg Leonard to this near side. Bajan under pressure, and he's sacked and brought down. Coming up and making that play is Ryan Myers, the defensive lineman, the senior. That's his fifth sack on the season. He's a player that makes a lot of plays in the backfield. Ten and a half tackles for a loss this year. Coming into today's game, he had 25 tackles, 11 of those solo. Last week, lived in the backfield, had four quarterback hurries, even had three pass breakups. Fourth and 22, a 40-yard field goal from Hayden August. Scriven is up and no good. Uh, good. It looked no good from our angle based on that, but no net, so it's kind of hard to tell where that ball actually went through. But the kick is up and good, and we had a field goal block too that we got to think about now, Travis, because if it's good earlier, you know, it's 27, so six point game, but now just a three point game. And Aiden August Griffin's field goal good. Make it 24 21, 256 to go. And we've also talked about the two-minute drive or last few minutes of the first half resulting in touchdowns for opponents in these last two ball games. We had about a minute to go. Notre Dame got a touchdown right before halftime. This game, similar situation. Kutztown gets a touchdown right before halftime. And then in the Notre Dame game as well, uh, maybe three, four minutes. Can't remember exactly what it was, but Notre Dame got the touchdown to go ahead with 28 seconds left. 
Oh, what is? We, it's we've gonna come down to defense for the yeah. Rams. Well, we've talked about it all year long with the Rams having that undersized defense, especially up in that front seven. This is when that really begins to show up because you've had those guys, even though you're rotating them, they're going to begin to wear down as the game goes on, especially the way Cutstown has really rededicated themselves to the run game here in the second half. That's one of the benefits of the run game. Not only can you control the clock and help out your defense, but it's going to pay dividends late in the game when you're able to pound that run and establish it early on, kind of like a boxer going to the body early on in the fight. You know it's going to really help out down the stretch. So right now, a tough test for this Rams defense with Shell being out, Chris Lane being banged up. You know he's a Chris warrior. Chris Lane hasn't been on the field for a while. So I he, see him out there, though, now in this so crucial situation. You, you know it was going to take a group of wild horses to keep him <laughs> off of the field in this crucial situation. Well, you've been criticized all year if you're the Shepherd defense. Now is your chance to make a big play and send this team or help send this team to the semifinals. Donnie Blaine throws over the middle incomplete, too short for the intended receiver, Derek Anderson. Second down and 10. And a little bit interesting, I think probably trying to catch Shepard off guard there that cuts down starts to drive for pass because there's plenty of time. There's 2.52 to go. They could have ran the football, but they – Come out with the pass to make it second down at 10. Davis is the back. Three receivers to the far side for the Golden Bears. And to their credit, the wide receiver was open. It was the right Man. read by the quarterback. It was just a little bit low for him to come up with the catch. The Rams fans that made the trip from Shepherdstown standing up, and now we got a funk. Again, another, another funky snap coming from the center. Back to the snap. Full start. 46 of the offense. The five-yard penalty remains. Second down. Big penalty there. Puts the ball at the we'll back up. Cuts down behind the sticks. Going to go on the tight end slash full bank, Tyler Borg. Not, not the start that you wanted to this drive. You go out, incomplete pass on first down. Penalty to begin second down. Second and 15 now. Not the offense that, that not that many do, but certainly not the type of offense that's built to play from behind the chains. Blaine in the shotgun. Blaine looking to run on the QB draw. Malik Holloway coming off of his blocker and making the tackle. So it's going to be third and long for Kutztown. We have another flag in the backfield. There's going to be a holding penalty. Do you think they accept this one or? That is interesting. You're going to back them up even even more. It's probably four. It might be four down territory. I don't know. I mean, you still have three time, or you only have two timeouts. I, I think you take it because it's putting them in a situation that's to your advantage. Yeah. Because you know they're going to have to draw back. They're going to try to have, have to pass. So you know you're going to be able to unleash those edge rushers. And hopefully you get a play on the ball on the back end. I know the cuts down defense has been great, but I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it is four down territory with the two timeouts. I think you probably trust your defense and hope you can get the stop. But in this situation now, you back them up to second down and 25. Similarly, going to be a tough situation. Donnie Blaine throwing to the near side complete. Derek Anderson has it at the 30-yard line with the nice sliding catch. And another name that we haven't called is uh, Cap. Jerome Cap hasn't come out there. He walked no. off earlier. It looked like he was cramping up a little bit, so that's why we've been calling Derek Anderson's name a little bit more down the stretch because the, the ace of that rotation hasn't been out there. So a resilient cutsdown football team losing two starters on the offensive side of the ball, yet they still have a chance to – Make something happen here late in the fourth quarter. Third down and five from the 30. Blaine throws over the middle. Incomplete. No cut. Caught. I think that's a catch by Novak. Shepard is all saying incomplete that it hit the turf. Novak at least came up with the football. And I think they're going to maybe take a look unless the official saw this clearly. I mean, there was a lot of bodies in there, so I didn't have a great angle at it. Travis, I don't know if you saw anything better from your situation. 
I'm looking right at a Shepherd Rams defender's back, so I wasn't able to see what <laughs> happened on that one. So I'm going, it's that's tough. I'm like, and the thing is, are they going to be able to see enough to overturn that? Like they said, the call on the field is incomplete pass, so they're going to need some concrete evidence to overturn that. And I mean, everybody on the Shepherd defense pretty much singled incomplete, except Novak was the only guy that said, "Hey, I caught that." <laughs> Because the Coatsau fans. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. So pass. must have bounced off the turf. So you have an interesting situation, I think, if you're Coatsau. Because of the only two timeouts left and 2.11 to go, it's a third and manageable, or fourth down and manageable. Do you lay it all on the line here, or do you just punt it away and trust your defense? Looks like Coatsau's going to go for it. Either way, you could still potentially get a stop defensively, hold them to a field goal, too. So yeah. I think this is the right decision if you're Kutztown and you want to play for the semifinals. Donnie Blaine looks to the near sideline, adjust at the line of scrimmage. Jordan Davis in the backfield. Fourth down and five. Blaine takes the snap, throws his receiver, fell down, and it's going to be intercepted by Batten, and there's no flag on the play. That should be a flag on Chris Lane for a blindside block. Jerome Pappas, the intended receiver, he fell down. Thought he got tripped, but there was no flag on the initial play. Davis coming out with the football. Ricky Robinson knocking it out of his hands. We have two flags down on the field. I think it's going to be a blindside block against Chris Lane on the return. I don't know why he goes for that hit. Like, hadn't hit anybody in a while. <laughs> Maybe. He is a linebacker. That is, that is true. <laughs> but just run the risk of not yeah. being available the following yeah, no, week. It, it, I don't think that's a smart play, especially from a guy that, that knows what he's doing out there as a senior leader. What do you think about the potential inter interference here on, on the deep ball? I don't know if you got to good look at the route. It was something where I, I don't think it's going to be enough to, to warrant a penalty. I, at this point in the game, you know the referees are going to be reluctant to try to step in and, and make a call that's going to change the game like that. And like we the play is an interception by the defense. During the return, personal foul, blindside block, number 10 of the defense. That's a 15-yard penalty. The ruling at the end of the field is that the runner, at the end of the run, the runner's knee was down prior to the ball coming loose. Kutztown seems to be questioning that. Honestly, I kind of lost track of everything when I saw Lane just deck the guy. Yeah. That I almost. <laughs> Certainly catches the eye. Yeah, I almost <laughs> forgot that we still had a return kind of going on there. But. Yeah, I, I just think we're. we're see if they review that too. As far yeah, as a possible review. pass interference, it was something where. I just think they were both going for the ball, and they got in, they both got tangled up. The defender has a right to the football the same way the wide receiver does. So I, I don't think he did enough to warrant a pass interference because yeah. he did everything you're supposed to do. If you're looking back towards the ball, they're going to let you get away with a little bit of bump on the play. So I don't think that's going to be enough to get the penalty. And right now it's going to be interesting to see if the fumble is going to stand or overturned or – Right I'm now, still worried about the hit. My goodness, Chris Lane annihilated that guy. Yeah. And the interesting thing, too, like that's not a penalty that can get you removed from the ball game, but it's very similar to, in my opinion, a, a uh, targeting, right? I mean, what's the difference yeah. between a blindside block and a targeting call? So, And, I mean, and if you want to make an argument, the, the targeting call, that's a bang-bang play. It's like right yeah. in the middle. The guy's going for the ball. You're trying to make a hit. I mean, that's – you really can't avoid that, but on a play like that where you're peeling back, like looking for a guy, I'm like, if I'm thinking of targeting in its true sense, you're targeting somebody when you peel right. back and hit somebody like that. And then also, you know, obviously we'll have to see what the call is here on this fumble or potential fumble. Right now it's Shepard football, uh, but they are reviewing it. It's taking a little bit of time, so. Well, see, Kutztown seemed to believe that that was a fumble and it was their football, but of course they believe that because, yeah. well, they want to have this opportunity. 
And, and credit to Cutsdown for not giving up on the play. Yeah. It'd be, it would have been very easy for them just to hang their hat after the wall got picked off, but they stayed after it and tried to make something happen. So what else is new? We have an exciting last-minute <laughs> ball game in the playoffs involving Shepard. All three games have been really great. And this review, we didn't have reviews in the first two rounds. We have reviews today. They haven't had it overturned yet, but we could potentially get one here, which would make a huge difference. They're staying over there talking for yeah, quite a long time. So that, and that that's when you start to maybe think that it could be overturned because you have to figure out exactly where the ball was recovered or in time on the clock as well. So that does, does not bode well for Shepard because of – Cutsdown is able to get the ball back at that spot. That's It'd be a big, great field position. Good, great field position. Two minutes left on the clock and two timeouts in your back pocket. So Cutsdown with kind of both a mixture of the offense and the defense on the field. Shepard was strictly the offense on the field. Two minutes to go. Officials taking their time on this decision. I wish there was a way that we had access to this uh, review film. <laughs> I was hoping you'd be able to use some of your celebrity <laughs> that you earned from last week's awesome game-winning touchdown call. Maybe you could, uh, you know, pull some strings and make that happen for us. I don't know. I'd have to talk to the NCAA. <laughs> <laughs> but as this goes on, you have to wonder what is extending it. Could it be that it's a fumble and that they're going to mark the football? The Kutztown fans are chanting, it's a fumble. So they believe it's a fumble, which they got to at this point. And, and still Kutztown isn't out of this ball game necessarily because two minutes and two timeouts, that's still enough time to get the ball back, but you'd have very limited time of possession remaining. So while this isn't the ball game, and of course you'd have to also prevent Shepard from getting a first down, it's certainly a crucial decision. I'll tell you what, they're certainly getting their money's worth out of the review booth. Well, hey, it's the reason we're not in the booth. No, so it hey, better be worth it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the weather, though, has been pretty nice. Like, I'll take this for being outside at a football game. And certainly nice atmosphere. I appreciate, too, the, the Kutztown Athletic Department for helping us get set up here and making certain we had a spot. They worked well with us. They didn't necessarily have to give us a spot, so I, I really do appreciate it. And uh, their sports information department cleared out a whole section, too, so there was no, like, controversy over where a camera can go and all that. Because we have had that before. So here we go. The official has taken the headset off. And we will eventually get to the end of this long review, which really, I mean, no matter what they rule, like it kills momentum in a football game. But you obviously want to see them get it right. <laughs> Slowly starting to see the entire Cuts Tail football team merging onto the field. <laughs> They're ready for any situation, offense, defense, or special teams. <laughs> Somehow it ends up being special teams. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Oh. Man, what a change of events that play is. How do you refocus after that? for both teams because it's such an emotional play for Kutztown because they threw an interception and Shepard too having the emotions of all right we got the football back our defense made a stop and now we got to go back on the field and not only that we're back on the field on our side of the field and what's huge how are they going to enforce that penalty right yeah that's a good point too which I wonder if the officials forgot about that <laughs> well he still got his flag out he's like hold up fellas <laughs> I threw that flag right. for a reason. Ah. Yeah, I think they're going to move it up. Oh, man. That's really going to hurt Shepard. That's a gut punch. 
And again, that coming from a veteran leader of this, the leader of this defense in Chris Lane with the penalty. And, you know, it was a great play by the defensive back, Batten, to pick that off. Clayton Batten but he made some big plays. He wasn't a starter at the beginning of the season, but he's worked his way into that starting role and has done a nice job for the Rams on the outside. But then the fumble on the return, you know, that's a situation where if you get an interception like that, usually coaches want you to just go down, and that's the reason why. So 2-0-1 to go, three-point ball game. Cuts down with the ball at the Shepard 44-yard line. Blaine takes the snap. They'll run Davis. Davis up the middle. Solid pickup down to the 36-yard line. And as good as those backup running backs are, they just don't have that extra gear yep. that he has when he touches the ball. And I said before the game when describing Kutztown and how they've rallied off 12 wins this season, I said they're gritty. And that has proven today just a, a no giving up mentality as Davis is stuffed in the backfield here by Jawan Addison. Along with Kyle Smith. So it'll be third down and three. The Golden Bears were backed up and obviously, you know, through an interception, resulting in a fumble, though, on the return by Shepard. But it was third and forever. Quick throw in the flat, complete. Davis dives forward for the first down. Puts down down to the 31-yard line. And nothing tricky about that. Those two wide receivers, their only job on that play was to run the defense off, and that's what they did, just clearing it out just enough for the running back to make a play. Jordan Davis. 58 seconds to go in this one. Davis remaining in the backfield to the left of Donnie Blaine, the backup quarterback coming in and leading a comeback for the ages if he can pull it off. Blaine throws near side complete. Out of bounds and making the catch here on this near side. Caden Hosty, excuse me, with 45 seconds to go. It's another first down for the Golden Bears. I'm sorry, second down and three after the seven yard pickup. 45 seconds to go. Shepard leading by three. Cuts down. Can settle for the field goal if necessary, but they want to win this one in regulation with 45 seconds to go. Blaine takes the snap. Throws tipped and nearly intercepted. There were several white jerseys breaking on that football. Baxter getting a hand up there to knock it away. That's been a couple times that Blaine's had balls knocked down. You know the quarterback wants to get the ball out quickly. It's going to be a lot of short stuff over the middle. So if you're not able to get basically a free run at the quarterback, what you want to do is take a couple steps, get your hand up, give him a difficult target to see through to try to hit an open wide receiver. Third down and three. Whistle here from this sideline as the officials making certain they're all on the same page. We got a third and three from the 24, 41 seconds to go. 24-21, Shepard leading cuts down. After a crazy sequence of events, Kutztown has gotten the ball to the 24-yard line. Donnie Blaine takes the snap. Blaine looking end zone for Derek Anderson. He made the catch. Touchdown, Golden Bears. Oh, my goodness. The defender was right there. It was good defense. But Anderson just able to shield off the defender with one arm, brings it in with the other arm, touchdown back in the end zone. And I tell you what, the young sophomore quarterback has stepped up in a big way, filling in for nickel. You got to give Donnie Blaine credit, too, because his first pass of the day was a pick six. They put his team down 21 nothing. Since then, Kutztown has outscored the number one offense in Division II college football, 28-3. What a turn of events. 39 seconds. Just a few moments ago, Donnie Blaine threw an interception. It was picked off by 
Baden of Shepard. Baden on the return, fumbles the football. We have a long review sequence leading to an overturn because initially it was ruled down on the field, and that's why that you know review is so big because they're able to get that call right. And now with 39 seconds to go, cuts down leads 28-24, but as we know, you can never count out the Shepherd University Rams. What a ball game. And a great throw there to Derek Anderson for the go-ahead score. And a decision to be made for the Golden Bears kickoff unit. Do you squib it and just try to keep it out of Ronnie Brown's hands but potentially giving the Rams good field position? Or you just try to boom it deep? You are kicking it into the wind, so it's going to be tough to try to get a touchback if you're trying to kick right. it out of the end zone. So, And we've seen a lot of shorter kicks from Kutztown. I think squib might be your best option here with the wind. Because you don't want to repeat of last week. But it, they'll go with the line drive type kick. Feel it about the nine yard line. Here goes Ronnie Brown. Ronnie Brown across the 30. Juke move at the 35. Out to about the 44 yard line with 30 seconds to go. <laughs> this dude is phenomenal. <laughs> i tell you what. I mean, he caught that low too. Yeah. It wasn't like he caught it on the run. Like last week, he kind of caught it on the run. You're marking at the 43. Because that's difficult to gauge it because it's coming at you as a, as a line drive, but you're going into the wind, so you know it's tailing off there towards the end, and he comes up without hesitating, plucks it with his hands, breaks some tackles, and gives your offense excellent field position. Well, last week, Shepard needed three to tie. This week, they need, they need four. They can't get four without scoring a touchdown to take the lead. Throws over the middle, nearly intercepted on kind of a route where Ryan Beach got held up. Second down at 10, I believe 25 it was a, seconds. It was an option route, and looks like Ryan Beach may have saw things differently, went inside, and very easily could have been a pick. And you can see Tyson Bajan trying to help out his young wide receiver. It's a clutch situation. Sometimes guys aren't going to see the same thing the same way at the same instance, and you need that at these points in a ball game. Second down and 10 from the 25. The Golden Bear crowd on their feet. Bajan looking for Gontere. And the penalty flag comes in. Wow. I'm a little surprised. Harris didn't get his head around. Yeah. He didn't get his head around. It's as plain as that. You have that much contact. You're initiating contact. If you get your head around, they're going to let you use the sidelines like that a little bit. But if right. you don't get your head around, I think that's an easy call for the officials to make. Because it looked like there was kind of some contact on both sides. But, yeah, I think you're right. With Harris not turning the head around, that will result in the penalty. And that's a big one because it at least moves Shepard into Kutztown territory with 21 seconds to go. And, I mean, that's a tough assignment, Harris. I mean, I understand it. You don't want to take your eyes off of a wide receiver the caliber of a Josh Gonteric, but – well, in that one, if you're going to play that physical, you got to do your part and sell it. If you want to ride him into the sidelines, you got to get your head around trying to find that ball. Bajan takes the snap. Bajan under some pressure. Rolls to the left. In and out of the hands of Greg Leonard. Harris makes up for it, makes a nice play on the football, knocks it out away, and second and 10 now, just 15 seconds. And that's something you see cuts down. They're blitzing Tyson Bajan from that right side of the offense, making him roll onto his left. When you force him to his left, he's a little bit more likely to go to check down wide, go to, to a check down option, as opposed to flushing him out to his right, where he's rolling to his strong hand, and he can still take those deep shots. You force him to his left, you make him take those check downs. Second and 10 for the 42. Bajan steps up under some pressure, rolling to his right, throwing it into four defenders, and it's knocked away. An incomplete, seven seconds. Is this the Hail Mary? Well, it's third down. You're certainly, well, yeah. I mean, it's seven, seven seconds, seconds, so I think we're probably going to see it. 28-24 cuts down. The Golden Bears, after a wild sequence, take the lead. Threw an interception, but the Rams fumbled. 
setting up puts down and then Derek Anderson catching the leading touchdown. Tyson Bajan trying to pull out one more miracle. Bajan under pressure, rolling out to the right. We'll check it toward the end zone. Oh my God! <laughs> Shepard at the last second again breaks Kutztown's heart. Was it got Tarek again? Alex Wetzel, the big tight end, saving the day for Shepard. Unbelievable. How? How does that happen? After how well things were looking for Kutztown. The Rams pull it out at the last second on the final play again. Back-to-back -back weeks. Alex Wetzel making the catch. I don't believe it. I'm as stunned as the Cutstown <laughs> fans are right now. I'm Oh my goodness. He rolls out to his right. He, he is rolls lethal. Out to the right. He rolls out to his right. He is lethal. Unbelievable job. And the Rams are headed to the semifinals after that. That is unbelievable. Kutztown. Game is over. Wow. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. Back to back weeks, Tyson Bajan rolls to the right, finds the end zone, gives Shepard the lead in the win. The Harlan Hill Trophy will go to number two for the Rams, and Shepard's going to the semifinals, the more important thing. And this last second win for the second week in a row. This is a team of destiny, it seems like, all of a sudden. Man, man. We're going to the post-game show. We'll take a second to regather our thoughts. Shepard with the 30-28 win over Kutztown on the final play of the game for the second week in a row. We're back in two minutes. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. This telecast is copyrighted by the NCAA for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any picture, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NCAA's consent is prohibited.